the preparation is at the maximum level we are just some days ahead of this particular exam your fmg examination good evening good evening good evening i hope i am loud clear and uh, we people are live and alive good evening good evening good evening i hope we people are live and alive within 2 3 4 minutes i'll be starting this particular session of 25 most important clinical questions in ent i just first of all be, in fact before starting this particular session i just wish and hope that you all 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 everyone each and every every fmg aspirant comes out clear they definitely say that uh, we have passed this particular examination two three very important things that i want to particularly focus on is please listen to me very carefully before i start this particular session one thing i want to just portray on for that particular day that is 20th of january that is bache aap sabhi ye baat dhyan se yaad rakhna do not come out of the examination center without even seeing एनी पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए कि आपने कोई क्वेश्चन देखा नहीं इट हैपन्स विद मेनी ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स कई सारे स्टूडेंट्स के साथ ये बहुत ज्यादा होता है कि वो पांच क्वेश्चन मिस हो गए दस क्वेश्चन देख ही नहीं पाए पेपर लेंदी लगा दिस इज द बिगेस्ट ब्लंड फॉर मी आई हैव पर्टिकुलरली अटेम्प्टेड वेरी रिसेंटली माई पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट मेडिकल एंट्रेंस एग्जामिनेशन वन थिंग आई कैन से वेरी लाउड एंड क्लियर इससे ज्यादा पेनफुल ब्लंडर कुछ नहीं हो सकता कि हम क्वेश्चन ही नहीं देख पाए हम क्वेश्चन ही नहीं देख पाए उससे ज्यादा बड़ा ब्लंडर देर कैन नॉट बी प्लीज मार्क माई वर्ड आपको क्वेश्चन सारे के सारे देख के आने हैं क्वेश्चन सारे के सारे देख के आने एटलीस्ट अटेम्प्ट सी द क्वेश्चन ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए कि नहीं मैं पांच क्वेश्चन मिस कर दिया इससे बड़ा देर कैन नॉट बी एनी बिगर ब्लंडर देन दिस एंड सेकेंडली फोकस ऑन टाइमिंग मुझे ऐसा लगता है टिल नाइनटीन ऑफ जनवरी योर नॉलेज प्लेज द रोल ऑन ट्वेंटी ऑफ जनवरी बिलीव मी ऑन ट्वेंटी ऑफ जनवरी इट इज टोटली डिपेंडेंट अपॉन योर प्रेजेंस ऑफ माइंड एंड टाइमिंग जहां एक्चुअली में आई हैव टू स्पेंड टाइम आई हैव टू इन्वेस्ट टाइम उस क्वेश्चन को हमें टाइम देना है एंड द क्वेश्चन दैट डज नॉट रिक्वायर मोर अमाउंट ऑफ टाइम वहां पे हमें टाइम बचाना है वी हैव टू इन्वेस्ट टाइम इन दोज क्वेश्चन विच एक्चुअली रिक्वायर टाइम एंड एट लास्ट सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट अपने फर्स्ट इंस्टिंग पर बिलीव करना पता नहीं आई डोंट नो वाई एंड हाउ ये ऐसा होता है कि उसी दिन पता नहीं अलग सा एक ऑब्सेसिव कंपल्सिव डिसऑर्डर आ जाता है एक ऑप्शन मार्क कर दिया उसके बाद भी वी आर रीडिंग इट ट्वाइस और थ्राइस हाँ सही मार्क किया है आई होप सो सही मार्क किया है सही मार्क किया है बिलीव इट एक बार में आपने जो आंसर मार्क कर दिया है फर्स्ट इंस्टिंग इज ऑलवेज राइट रेयरली कभी डबल चेक करने पे अगर हम ऑप्शन या आंसर चेंज करते हैं तो मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम गलत ही निकलता है अपनी इंस्टिंक्ट अपनी नॉलेज पर बिलीव करो एंड एट लास्ट आई वॉन्ट टू से दैट आई नो द फैक्ट दैट न्यू ईयर इज कमिंग अराउंड बट बच्चे आर न्यू ईयर स्टार्ट ओनली वेन आर एफ एम जी एग्जामिनेशन रिजल्ट आर आउट एंड वी सी दैट वी हैव पास द एग्जामिनेशन कोई रेजोल्यूशन कुछ नहीं करना है द ओनली थिंग दैट आई हैव टू डू इज रिवाइज 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 सॉल्व एज मच एम सी क्यूज एज पॉसिबल गिव योर मॉक टेस्ट ग्रैंड टेस्ट प्रिपेयर एट योर मैक्सिमम लेवल और एक चीज मैं बच्चों सच बताऊँ इट इज ओके टू बी एंक्शियस फाइन प्लीज लिसन टू मी वेरी केयरफुली इट इज ओके टू बी एंक्शियस इट इज ओके टू बी एंक्शियस एट योर मैक्सिमम लेवल There is not even a single person who goes to the examination hall and is not worried or anxious. Anxiety is fine. Anxiety is fine, and I believe in one particular fact. Let me take the anxiety in this particular paper rather than taking that anxiety and what worry and all again after six months. This was my strategy when I was going for my postgraduate examination. That. I'll take all the anxiety, all my problems, everything in this particular attempt. I don't want that I should have that same anxiety. I should read those same things six six months later or one year later. With that note, I just wish all the very best. Let us start with today's session. Fine. 
Now let us see this particular question. First question. A 60 year old diabetic patient comes to OPD with extremely painful lesion in the external ear and otoria. Otoria, you know, ear discharge. There was evidence of granulation tissue in the ear with facial nerve involvement. Most likely diagnosis is. Answer please. Very easy, simple question. I will solve all these questions with you. I haven't marked any answer. Let me become a candidate by myself. I'll solve these questions live along with you. I'll also apply my same FMG knowledge. Yes, most of you have answered it collect very much correctly, in fact, that is malignant otitis externa. Very much correct. And I'll tell you something very fine, very fine thing today. First of all, let me rule out the other options, then I'll come to malignant otitis externa. But first of all, it cannot be chronic separative otitis media or acute separative otitis media because lesion is there in the external ear. There cannot be a lesion in external ear if it is chronic separative otitis media unless and until we are landing up into any complication. Secondly, focus on this word diabetes. Diabetes, bacho. I always say mark my word. Bacche, remember this. Diabetes or ear ka question. Agar if you see diabetes and the ear word together, 110% it is malignant otitis externa. No need to read the question completely. Save time. I'll say save time. If you see diabetes and ear together, 110% it is malignant otitis externa. Diabetes and ear together, it is malignant otitis externa, 110%. And remember, diabetes and nose together, again 110% question is on mucormycosis. 110%. These are the very much facts that you have to remember. If diabetes and ear are together, it is 110% malignant otitis externa. Look for your option and mark it correctly. No need to read the question. Save time. I particularly say that save time on my subject, my subject ENT, and spend time on the subjects that may actually require time. Fine. Secondly, if diabetes and nose are coming together, 110%, it is mucormycosis. And they'll definitely, they may give a picture, even if they don't give a picture, they'll say diabetes word, 110%. And the questions that they are asking on mucormycosis, both in FMG and NEAT PG are, what is the treatment? It is liposomal amphotericin B. Liposomal amphotericin B. This is the easiest question that they can present it to you. And one very nice thing again, if diabetes and they are telling about a swelling in the neck, please remember, diabetes and if they are talking about a swelling in the neck, neck, please remember swelling in the neck, in the submental region, 110%, it is Ludwig's abscess or Ludwig's angina. See, please remember, diabetes and ear together, 110%, it is malignant otitis externa. Diabetes and nose are in the question, 110%, it is mucormycosis. Save time, mark your option, go ahead. Fine, diabetes and they say swelling in the neck. Also, they will use the words, please remember, for Ludwig's angina or Ludwig's abscess, they may use the word, I am telling you the gold words. One, there was history of dental extraction. Something related to dental word they may use. Dental extraction or what? Dental caries. These are the extra points that I am telling to you for Ludwig's angina or Ludwig's abscess. Dental extraction or dental caries. These are the words they can use. Even if you want to save the time, you can just mark diabetes, oral cavity or neck together. It is 110% Ludwig's angina. Or they can use poor oral hygiene. These are the golden words that they will use in the question. Before going ahead for malignant otitis external, let me repeat this once and for all. Diabetes or Khan, Khan or diabetes, ear and diabetes together, 110% go for malignant otitis externa. Diabetes 
एंड नोज अगर डायबिटीज और नोज के बारे में बात हो रही है हंड्रेड एंड टेन परसेंट इट इज़ म्यूकर माइकोसिस इट इज़ इन्वेसिव डिसीज कॉज बाई म्यूकर इन इन पर्टिकुलरली आर सेकेंड कोविड वेव म्यूकर माइकोसिस वॉज देयर अ लॉट ऑफ म्यूकर माइकोसिस केसेस वी हैड टू ऑपरेट फाइन ट्रीटमेंट इज लाइफ लाइपोसोमल एम्फोटेरिसन बी एंड इफ दे आर यूजिंग डायबिटीज वर्ड विद ओरल कैविटी और नेक हंड्रेड एंड टेन परसेंट इट इज लुडविक्स एंजाइना और लुडविक्स एप्सिस क्लियर लेट अस लेट अस गो अहेड लेट अस टॉक अबाउट मेलिग्नेंट ओटाइटिस एक्सटर्नल इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एस द ऑस्ट्रोमाइलाइटिस ऑफ द स्कल बेस प्लीज रिमेंबर दे विल डेफिनेटली यूज द वर्ड डायबिटीज दे विल डेफिनेटली यूज द वर्ड डायबिटीज वॉट आर द टिपिकल टिपिकल क्लिनिकल फीचर्स विद ईयर डिस्चार्ज very painful believe me i have seen patients very much recently of this malignant otitis externa typically 50 60 year old diabetic male or female they'll come with excruciating pain especially in the night they'll come with excruciating pain especially in the night they'll come they may or may not have facial palsy fine it is caused you know the fact that it is caused by which bacteria one very important bacteria related to malignant otitis externa it is pseudomonas aeruginosa all different types of colors are being found by pseudomonas aeruginosa bluish greenish discharge greenish discharge bluish yellowish discharge yellowish greenish discharge why because pyocyanin you must have read in your microbiology it has that particular thing that particular toxin that generates color fine next gold point that you have to remember for for malignant otitis externa is that technetium 99 scan is used for diagnosis technetium 99 scan is used for diagnosis and last please remember gallium scan is used for prognosis gallium scan is used for prognosis i know it is not my domain but still i want to discuss some of the anti pseudomonal drugs you must have studied in your pharmacology i'll just revise it fine how i used to remember anti pseudomonal drugs please remember how i used to remember anti pseudomonal drugs all the cephalosporins having a letter p in between like cefepime c pseudomonas aeruginosa starts with letter p cefepime Ceph, peroxazone again. Fine, again that letter P in between. One very important, one very important cephalosporin, जो कि जिद्दी है, बहुत ज़्यादा जिद्दी है, stubborn है against pseudomonas aeruginosa. Remember, cefta, zidi, zidim. Cefta zidim, zidi है, stubborn है against pseudomonas aeruginosa. Cefta zidim, zidi. and last it is piperacillin and tazobactam again starting with p piperacillin tazobactam these are some of the examples of the anti pseudomonal drugs how i used to remember all the cephalosporins having the letter p in between secondly cefta ziddi ziddi it is ziddi against what pseudomonas aeruginosa and lastly peptas piperacillin and tazobactam yes i want to show you the clinical pictures of ludwig zangina mucor mycosis see this is the typical image that they can use for mucor mycosis see this particular image yes mucor mycosis typically giving a blackish appearance in the nasal cavity in the nose it destroys almost all the tissues coming in between leads to necrosis i personally have seen patients of mucor mycosis landing up into death within one or two days that much fatal and aggressive this disease is mucor mycosis and see these are the typical images that they can use for ludwig's angina see i told you they'll use the word dental caries poor dental hygiene and they'll show you a swelling in the neck forget this thing if they say diabetes and they show you a neck swelling fine 110 percent but say 110 percent it is ludwig's angina this is the easiest methodology i hope so this particular topic is clear fine 
let us attempt this particular question and a mnemonic will be coming to your side that you'll enjoy a lot fine let us attempt this particular question sinuses that will be present in a child of five years of age is our options are in front of you please let us attempt this particular question sinuses that will be present i have created this sort of a tricky question let us see who all answer this particular question all the sinuses that will be present in a child of five years of age what is the answer i have particularly taught it in my life classes also and this mnemonic is something very useful you'll enjoy it a lot i'm getting number of options d b c chalo let us solve this question together let us solve this question together you just have to write some points let us write down the first point and then we'll come to the mcq fine appearance of paranasal sinuses first point that you have to remember forget the things that you may have learned or whatever you may be learning the easiest methodology for appearance of paranasal sinuses is coming to your way let us see please remember the first paranasal sinus to appear please remember the first paranasal sinus to appear first paranasal sinus to appear is maxillary this is the first golden point the first paranasal sinus to appear is maxillary fine this is the first point fine now this is the second point that you have to remember the sinuses the paranasal sinuses that are present at birth please remember the sinuses the paranasal sinuses that are present at birth it is maxillary and ethmoid that's it after that you'll remember everything first point the first paranasal sinus to appear it is maxillary fine and the paranasal sinuses that are present at birth it is maxillary and ethmoid maxillary and ethmoid both are present at birth but please remember first paranasal sinus to appear it is maxillary the paranasal sinuses that are present at birth are maxillary and ethmoid both but ethmoid completely develops by which particular age for the people who understand hindi see this word e e stands for e e stands for ek 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 means one yes ethmoid completely develops by one year of age please remember ethmoid is present at birth please remember ethmoid is present at birth but it completely develops by one year of age fine maxillary and ethmoid both are present at birth ethmoid is present but it completely develops by one year of age fine this point clear this point clear now the mnemonic is coming to your side please 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 let us talk about the sinus sphenoid see this sphenoid fine sphenoid can you say that this sphenoid s is looking like number 5 yes 100% this is something that i can see s it is looking like 5 yes 110% yes sir at 5 years of age at 5 years of age sphenoid sinus appears at 5 years of age sphenoid sinus appears but i want to tell you one very important thing i want to tell you one very important thing human body is always having a range bachcho please remember aisa nahi hai ki supposedly a child is having birth date tomorrow and is turning 5 immediately sphenoid sinus will come no ek range to hogi na human body mein kisi mein thoda pehle aa jayega kisi mein thoda baad mein just you have to do plus minus 1 plus minus 1 that is 4 to 6 years at 4 to 6 years of age sphenoid sinus appears that much easy sphenoid sinus s looking like 5 you have to remember just 5 plus minus 1 at 4 to 6 years of age sphenoid sinus appears easy hell easy very easy yes yes now now look at look at this particular thing let us look at this particular thing frontal 
Fine. Frontal. Now, let me invert this letter F. Let me invert this letter F. It will become 7. Yes, 110%. Sir, at 7 years of age, frontal sinus appears. 7 years of age, frontal sinus appears. 7 years of age, frontal sinus appears. That much easy. Fine. 7 years of age, frontal sinus appears. Again, I'll be giving a range. Fine. Human body carries a range. I'll be giving a range. Plus minus 1, 6 to 8 years. My job is done. That much easy is appearance of paranasal sinuses. No need to remember MEFS. Fine. This is the easiest methodology. This is the easiest methodology. The first paranasal sinus to appear, it is maxillary, first thing. Second, the sinuses that are present at birth, it is maxillary and ethmoid. E stands for ethmoid, E stands for ache. Ache saal mein bacho, one year of age mein, ethmoid completely develops. That is the thing that you have to remember. Fine. Next, let us look at sphenoid. Sphenoid, S, starting, starting. It is looking like number 5. Yes, sir. At 5 years of age, sphenoid sinus appears. But I'll give it a range. 4 to 6. Fine. Fine. Now let us look at frontal. F. Let us invert this letter F. It is looking like 7. Yes, sir. At 7 years of age, frontal sinus appears. So if I ask you, which is the last sinus to appear? See your mnemonic. It is in front of you. 7 last. May. It is frontal sinus that appears at last it is frontal sinus that appears at last 7, 6 to 8 years or 7. Yes, sir. It is a very famous question. Which is the last sinus to appear? Frontal. And because it is the last sinus to appear, so the most variable sinus, most variable paranasal sinus is also considered to be as frontal only. That much easy is this particular thing, appearance of paranasal sinus. I hope this is loud and clear and it is sticking inside your mind like hell or anything. This is the easiest methodology that, I mean, you can remember the appearance of paranasal sinuses. Fine. Fine. Now let us go ahead. My, now let us go ahead. I want to, I want to add some of the points that you all should remember for what paranasal sinuses. It is what? It is the X-ray views. X-ray views, X-ray views. Let us see the X-ray views. I won't erase this particular thing because I want that this complete PDF should reach to you. Please remember, I have created these 25 most important questions of ENT in such a way. Believe me, most, most, most number of topics of this particular thing, your ENT subject will be clear. Almost 90 to 95 percent of the important topics that can come to your FMG examination will be clear, will be in fact covered within these 25 questions. That's why I won't erase it. Focus. Now let us see <coughs> the X-ray radiological things for these uh, what paranasal sinuses. You must have read, you must have read, you must have read Waters view. You must have read Waters view. I remember I used to mug up Waters view, Waters view, Waters view, Waters view. Very good that you remember Waters view is for maxillary sinus. How I used to remember it, I being the most dumbest one among all of you, I'll again invert this letter W, it will become M. Fine, Waters view is best for maxillary sinus. You know Waters view is best for the maxillary sinus. Waters view is the best for maxillary sinus. Please remember, Waters view is best for the maxillary sinus. It is also called as, please remember, O. M view. What does this OM? Believe me, many of the students say it as open mouth. No, bache, please do not make this mistake. Waters view is not open mouth. OM actually stands for occipital mental view. Please remember, occipital mental view is the other name of Waters view. From wherever the content has been studied, believe me, it is. 110% surety thing that Waters view is OM, occipito mental view. Fine. It is the best for maxillary sinus. Next thing, Pierce view. Pierce view is basically water plus open mouth. Open mouth is actually coming for Pierce view. 
वॉटर्स प्लस ओपन माउथ इज पियर्स व्यू विच इज बेस्ट फॉर स्वीनोइड साइनस विच इज बेस्ट फॉर स्वीनोइड साइनस विच इज बेस्ट फॉर स्वीनोइड साइनस एंड एट लास्ट कार्डवेल व्यू कार्डवेल व्यू इज बेस्ट फॉर फ्रंटल एंड इथमोइड कार्डवेल व्यू इज बेस्ट फॉर फ्रंटल एंड इथमोइड एनी ऑफ द अपियरेंस ऑफ पैरानिजल साइनसिस कैन कम इन योर एग्जाम बट बिलीव मी इफ यू आस्क माई गट फीलिंग एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स ऑलवेज 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 वॉटरस व्यू इज कमिंग वेन एवर दे वॉन्ट टू आस्क एक्सरे नोज एंड पैरानिजल साइनसिस बिलीव मी दे ऑलवेज ऑलवेज ऑलमोस्ट आस्क वॉटरस व्यू टिपिकल इमेज वॉटरस व्यू प्लीज रिमेंबर यू कैन नॉट मेक अ मिस्टेक इन दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग you cannot make a mistake in this particular thing most of the times waters view is coming w it is best for maxillary sinus i hope this is clear let us go to the next question let us enjoy this session believe me these two and a half three hours whatever time it takes it doesn't matter i'll make sure and in fact i want that all your ent question should be correct should be correct i don't want like you even uh, in fact if you ask me mai bilkul nahi chahta ki aapka ek bhi question miss ho fine ek bhi question fine let us attempt this particular question together fine ah first of all let us go back to that particular question what is the answer please 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 sinuses that will be present in a child of 5 years of age maxillary will be present ethmoid will be present and what sphenoid will be present frontal sinus won't be there please remember frontal sinus won't be there frontal sinus appears you remember frontal f it appears by 7 years basically 6 to 8 i am asking for a 5 year old child fine so the answer is directly option d this cannot be the option this cannot be the option apart from maxillary ethmoid sphenoid will also come yes now 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 let us come to this particular question and let us solve this question together and again i'll teach you very fine thing if you know well and good if you do not again this t staging believe me t staging of laryngeal carcinoma you will remember today itself in this particular session itself let us read a 60 year old male smoker presents with change in voice endoscopic examination reveals involvement of arytenoids only okay it was also noticed that the vocal cords were immobile fine what shall be the t staging of the patient yes let us solve it together vocal cords immobile involvement of the arytenoids only what is the answer let us give you 10 seconds for this particular thing vocal cords were immobile चलो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट अस स्टडी एंड देन आफ्टर दैट वी विल सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन टुगेदर हाउ टू डायग्नोस टी स्टेजिंग बिलीव मी नेक्स्ट फाइव मिनट्स यू विल आंसर दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन बाय योरसेल्फ द फर्स्ट फैक्ट दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर प्लीज रिमेंबर how do we diagnose t1 please remember you have to look for your words you have to look for your words if only please remember only one named structure is there if only one named structure is there in the question bachche 110% it is t1 first point if only one named structure is there in the question it is t1 supposedly i ask you supposedly if i ask you a 60 year old male smoker comes to ent opd with change in voice endoscopic examination reveals involvements of true vocal cords only or supposedly 60 year old male smoker comes to ent opd with chief complaint of change in voice endoscopic examination reveals involvement of arytenoids only single structure stage is t1 only one named structure fine one named structure believe me if there is only one named structure involved it is t1 so many of you may be thinking okay in that arytenoids were only involved it would have been t1 no let us look ahead let us see other points 
if any more than one named structure is there in the question please remember if any more than one named structure is involved or any more than one named structure is there in the question but check directly 110% it is t2 let me frame a question for you let me frame a question for you a 60 year old male smoker comes to ENT OPD with change in voice endoscopic examination reveals involvement of arytenoids and false focal cords fine t2 endoscopic examination reveals involvement of arytenoids and true vocal cords t2 endoscopic examination reveals involvement of arytenoids ae folds true vocal cords false vocal cord stage t2 any more than one fine any more than one named laryngeal structure please focus laryngeal structure any more than one named laryngeal structure but check stage is t2 no need to spend or waste time in that question please fine and to name a stage as t3 directly look for your word if this say this particular word please remember there were there is what vocal cords are immobile if you see this word vocal cords were immobile or fixed forget t1 t2 whatever even if there is one structure involved two structure involved 500 structure involved of larynx it doesn't matter if vocal cords immobile or fixed written it is directly t3 it doesn't matter how many named structures are written in the question let me be very clear if vocal cords are immobile or fixed if this particular thing is written stage is directly t3 and lastly to name a stage as t4 any structure other than larynx involved any structure other than larynx larynx involved stage is directly t4 any structure other than larynx like they may use the word thyroid they may use the word base of tongue they may use the word carotid any structure other than larynx thyroid is not part of larynx fine thyroid is not part of larynx base of tongue is not part of larynx fine vellicula is not part of larynx external carotid artery whatever structure any muscle they say any muscle which is not a part of larynx any structure which is not a part of larynx if they say it is involved stage is directly t4 I hope this is loud and clear. I'll repeat this thing once again. To name a stage as T1, only one named structure will be there in the question. To name a stage as T2, more than one named structure will be there. To name a, a stage as T3, please remember they'll definitely use the word vocal cords were immobile and fixed. It doesn't matter how many st named structures are involved. Fine. And to name a stage as T4, they will show that there is involvement of any structures they most commonly they use the word thyroid that it was found that thyroids were also involved stage is directly t4 fine any structure other than larynx involved stage is directly t4 fine now let us look at this particular question a 60 year old male smoker presents when change in voice okay endoscopic examination reveals involvement of arytenoids only okay one name structure this stage can be t1 but read the next line it was also noticed that the vocal cords were immobile i told you if this particular line is written it doesn't matter how many name structures are involved stage is if they are using this particular word vocal cords were immobile 110 percent they want to show that the stage is t3 to name a stage as t4 they'll use the word that they, it was seen the thyroid was also involved fine fine they may use external carotid artery or base of the tongue any structure which is not a part of larynx now let us solve the stage what is it is t3 it is t3 i hope now you people are answering it very much correctly c option t3 is the right answer now the right answers are coming on my screen that i can very much appreciate fine and now if you want to ask me the management of the treatment it is even more easy even more easy i have seen all those neat pj nict and fmg papers please listen to me very carefully for both T1 and T2, remember radiotherapy is the answer. Do not see the options, do not wa waste on the options, do not 
वेस्ट टाइम ऑन द ऑप्शन सेव टाइम दैट्स माय मोटो टी वन एंड टी टू डायरेक्टली चेक फॉर रेडियोथेरेपी मार्क द आंसर गो अहेड मार्क द आंसर गो अहेड टी वन एंड टी टू ट्रीटमेंट इज सिंपली रेडियोथेरेपी फाइन T1 and T2 radio therapy 120 percent for your FMG examination you have to remember if I was teaching my post graduate then I would have dealt okay what is this what is that what is this what is that what type of radio therapy but for your undergraduate examination level like your FMG need PG simply it is only one thing that you have to remember for T1 and T2 radio therapy fine and for T3 and T4 directly it is total laryngectomy. Total laryngectomy, fine. Remember, total laryngectomy with lymph node dissection. You have to just and, and I'll tell you in the options they'll mention only this word total laryngectomy. Still, uh, some may be having what I use this word tinea vermicularis inside their anal canal, so they want a detailed answer. Let me tell you if total laryngectomy plus lymph node dissection. plus minus radiotherapy or chemotherapy also but they'll I am 100% sure they'll only give the option total laryngectomy for T3 and T4 fine so and this question has been asked that's why I'm telling you this question has been asked both in need PG and your FMG examination this particular question was asked and management was asked options total laryngectomy was only given you had to mark total laryngectomy that's it let us save time and go ahead fine for t1 and t2 radiotherapy for t3 t4 total laryngectomy with lymph node dissection plus minus radiotherapy i hope it is clear loud clear let us go ahead fine i'll revise this thing again for t1 and t2 both it is radiotherapy for t3 and t4 see the go for total laryngectomy no options in between I shouldn't waste time in seeing the options. I have to save time for other subjects also. Total laryngectomy plus lymph node dissection plus minus radiotherapy. Fine. Let us go ahead to the next question. Let us go ahead to the next question. Chalo, answer this. Let us go ahead with the next question. Management of bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy includes. Let us see, answer this within 5 to 10 seconds. Very easy, again a direct question. Management of bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy includes. Answer. Management of bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy includes. Focus, 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 focus. Management of bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy includes I'll solve this question again with you people and I'll clear your concepts. Again mix of answers, what number of what mixture of answers are coming. I'll first of all clear your concepts then we'll solve this question together. Then we'll solve this question together. Fine? Fine? Let us first read this particular thing. First of all, remember, you know, this is adduction, this is abduction, this is adduction, this is abduction, fine, adduction and abduction. The main adductor, there are no, there are number of adductors like cricothyroid, lateral cricoeritinoid or whatever, interarytenoid. You don't have to remember all these. Just remember the main adductor, the main adductor of vocal cord, the main adductor of vocal cord. Please remember the main adductor of vocal cord. It is cricothyroid. The main adductor of vocal cord. It is cricothyroid. The main adductor of vocal cord. It is cricothyroid. And which is the main abductor? It is also called as the safety muscle of larynx. It is also called as the safety muscle of larynx. It is PCA. That is posterior cricoarytenoid. Fine. Posterior cricoarytenoid. Clear. Fine. Adductor is, it is cricothyroid. Abductor, it is posterior cricoarytenoid. The next point that you have to remember. 
all the muscles of larynx are supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve please 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 focus all the muscles of larynx are supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve all the muscles means i had told you just remember two muscles pc and cricoretinoid fine all the muscles of larynx are supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve that means pca is also supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve fine except for the cricothyroid which is supplied by the external branch of superior laryngeal nerve all the muscles of larynx that means your pca also are supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve except for the cricothyroid which is supplied by the external branch of superior laryngeal nerve this is the point that you should repeat five times in your mind all muscles of larynx are supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve except for the cricothyroid which is supplied by the external branch of superior laryngeal now let us focus now let us focus these are my normal vocal cords fine this is adduction and this is abduction this is adduction this is abduction fine these are my normal vocal cords supposedly my bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy occurs please remember if bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy occurs which muscle won't be working first answer me this thing if bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy palsy occurs which muscle won't be working now which muscle won't be working then only your concept will be clear that's why most of the students had uh, answered it wrongly if bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy occurs which muscle won't be working please focus which muscle won't be working if bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy occurs which muscle won't be working bachche yes if bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy occurs my pca won't be working pca won't be working that means vocal cords cannot abduct vocal cords cannot abduct they will adduct why because cricothyroid is working normally let us focus this thing again if bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy occurs bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy occur that means my pca is not working that means my vocal cords won't would not abduct they will adduct only because cricothyroid is working properly fine 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 okay so i will go for tracheostomy yes sir you will go for tracheostomy but sir please my vocal cords are lying close to each other sir aapko to vocal cords separate bhi to karna hai you have to separate the vocal cords yes sir you have to separate the vocal cords separation of vocal cords that means lateralization and what is lateralization it is type 2 thyroplasty fine please let us let i want that you should not mug this up i have seen candidates they just mug it up mug it up okay recurrent laryngeal if you mug it up 110% you will make a mistake let us let us think about it once again if there is bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy that means my which muscle won't work my pca would not work that means abduction won't happen that means vocal cords will lie close to each other because of cricothyroid adductor yes or no fine vocal cords will lie. so what i have to do i have to lateralize the vocal cord na bachche lateralization of vocal cord is type 2 thyroplasty type 2 thyroplasty similarly 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 let us attend this particular question supposedly there is bilateral superior laryngeal nerve palsy let us say this thing there is bilateral superior laryngeal nerve palsy focus supposedly there is bilateral superior laryngeal nerve palsy that means if superior laryngeal nerve palsy is there which muscle won't be working first answer me this thing if there is bilateral superior laryngeal nerve palsy which muscle won't be working i'll repeat it bachche don't worry i know the fact that most of the candidates mug this up I, and i can see and appreciate those candidates who are answering it because i had made that point very much clear in my live classes also don't worry i won't go ahead i have to teach you then only it, even if it takes 3 4 5 hours it doesn't matter 
I'll repeat this. Don't worry. First of all, answer this. If bilateral superior laryngeal nerve palsy is there, if bilateral superior laryngeal nerve palsy is there, then tell me which muscle won't work. It is cricothyroid. Cricothyroid won't work. Fine. If cricothyroid won't work, that means adduction cannot be there. Vocal cords will lie open, abducted. Vocal cords will lie open, abducted. Yes. So, sir, I'll do tracheostomy. Fine, you'll do tracheostomy. But, mujhe bache vocal cords ko pass bhi to lana hai. Pass lana means medialization. I have to bring the vocal cords together. To bring, in, to bring them together, that means medialization na. And medialization is type 1 thyroplasty. Fine, now you're getting it, this particular thing clear. I'll repeat this thing again. If there is bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy, let us look again. Now I'll solve this with blue, blue ink. Fine. If there is bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy, forget about aspiration and all. First focus on this thing. If there is bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy, that means which muscle is not working? That means PCA is not working. PCA is an abductor. That means my abduction won't happen. Abduction nahi hoga. Abduction won't happen. If abduction won't happen, that means my vocal cords will lie close to each other. Yes, my vocal cord will lie close to each other. Then what I have to do? I have to do tracheostomy with separating them. That means lateralization. This is type 2 thyroplasty. Fine. Is it clear now? Is it clear now? I suppose it is clear. Now let us solve this question. Now let us look at this particular question. Again, fresh. Again, fresh. Fine. Management of bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy. Bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy. Bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy means my which muscle won't work? My PCA won't work. My PCA posterior cricoarytenoid won't work. That means abduction. Abduction won't happen. Abduction, abduction won't happen. That means my vocal cords will lie close to each other, adducted. Cricothyroid is working properly. Fine. Fine. So what I have to do? I have to lateralize them. I have to lateralize them. Yes, I have to lateralize them. I have to separate them. And lateralization or separation is bache type 2 thyroplasty. Fine. So the answer is B. So the answer is B. Fine. So the answer is B. I hope now your concepts are clear. I have seen candidates mugging up. Okay, recurrent bache, you'll make a mistake. Sometimes concepts are more essential than mugging it up so that it retains in your brain. Because you were mugging it up, that's why many of the students had committed mistake in this particular question. And how I used to remember thyroplasty, I'll tell you. You remember microlaryngeal surgeries, MLS, we do microlaryngeal surf, uh, surgeries like for vocal polyp, nodule. Yes, you remember vocal nodule poly, you do microlaryngeal surgeries, M, L, S. This is the mnemonic, microlaryngeal sur surgeries. Type 1 thyroplasty, type 1 thyroplasty is medialization. Opposite to medialization, type 2 thyroplasty. Lateralization. Type 3 thyroplasty, S, shortening. And type 4, the last is Type 4, which is the left one? It is lengthening. That much easy is the mnemonic. MLS, microlaryngeal surgeries. MLS is the mnemonic. MLS, microlaryngeal sur surgeries. Yes. M is medialization, which is type 1. Fine. Type 1 thyroplasty. Type 2 thyroplasty, it is lateralization. Type 3 thyroplasty is shortening. And type 4 thyroplasty is lengthening. Fine. That's why, but let me be very clear. That's why I don't let students learn in this way. Okay, medialization in bilateral adductor palsy. Because I know that the mnemonic is becomes almost waste when we reach the examination hall. We forget. We forget. You just have to remember the concept. This concept is the thing. All muscles of larynx are supplied by a recurrent laryngeal nerve. All muscles means PCA is supplied by a recurrent laryngeal nerve. Except cricothyroid which is supplied by superior laryngeal nerve. So if there is bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy, that means my PCA will not work. If my PCA will not work, that means my vocal cord cannot abduct, cannot 
abduct that means my vocal cord will lie close to each other in adducted position so what i have to do is tracheostomy with separation that is lateralization lateralization is type 2 thyroplasty fine and if i say there is bilateral superior laryngeal nerve palsy if i say there is bilateral superior laryngeal nerve palsy if i say bilateral superior laryngeal nerve palsy then that means my which muscle is not working it is cricothyroid which is not working if i say there is bilateral superior laryngeal nerve palsy that means which muscle is not working my cricothyroid is not working fine if cricothyroid is not working my vocal cords cannot adduct if they cannot adduct that means they will be abducted so what i have to do is tracheostomy along with that i have to bring those vocal cords close to each other and it is medialization type 1 thyroblasty i hope this is clear fine and if many of the students are asking but you have to remember left recurrent is more commonly involved than right recurrent and if i say that if you say okay, if a person is going if a person is going fine if a person is going for clean cut thyroidectomy then most of the times it is some are asking uh, answering what recurrent laryngeal nerve if i'm going for a total thyroidectomy high chances are that my superior laryngeal nerve palsy occurs we remember the fact for total thyroidectomy some may say recurrent laryngeal nerve some may say superior laryngeal nerve i am saying total thyroidectomy go for superior laryngeal nerve but i am 110 percent sure but if a question comes on this particular topic please 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 remember this is something very important and this comes after you remember this particular thing fine now now let us answer this particular question this particular question is genuinely genuinely very easy very easy question please focus please focus please focus please focus please focus what is bryce sign what is bryce sign what is bryce sign and bryce sign is seen in very important questions what is bryce sign where is it seen bryce sign many of the students have answered it very much correctly yes sir it is seen in laryngocele sir what is bryce sign sir whenever a patient presents with an external or combined laryngocele and i press that particular swelling it will produce a hissing or a gurgling sound that particular sign is called as bryce sign seen in laryngocele very rightly answered people are shouting out answers yes sir it is seen in trumpet blowers or glass blowers and if i i'll tell you something again my gut feeling is coming to your side if they are asking any question on laryngocele they'll answer only two things because since time immemorial they have only two things to ask in laryngocele what firstly what is bryce sign and secondly it is seen in trumpet blowers or glass blowers apart from that there is not a, even a single mcq that can be asked from laryngocele as such they won't ask you the types it's an mcq okay fine but let us answer what is the sign that will be seen in post cricoid laryngeal carcinoma can anyone answer if there is a post cricoid laryngeal carcinoma or if there is a retropharyngeal abscess or if there is a prevertebral abscess what is the sign seen what is the sign seen let us go ahead let us build our knowledge if there is a post cricoid laryngeal carcinoma if there is a post cricoid laryngeal carcinoma what is the sign seen anybody anybody remembers but a boy sign you are answering boy sign is seen in zenkers diverticulum pharyngeal pouch i want to ask what is this sign that will be seen in post cricoid laryngeal carcinoma what is the sign that is seen in post cricoid laryngeal carcinoma let us understand this thing 
if you want what you have to do just take this thing make a complete hand like this what you have to do just put it on your laryngeal framework push it backwards push it backwards and then move it laterally push it backwards and then move it laterally push it backwards and then move it laterally you'll feel the crepitus and that crepitus is normal that is called as laryngeal crepitus also called as moore's crackle that is normal and if you are not feeling it then believe me you might have a problem <laughs> fine that is normal laryngeal crepitus that is seen in every individual normal individual fine you have to push your laryngeal framework backward and then move it laterally you'll feel that grating sensation cut 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 that grating sensation like bones are rubbing to each other that is laryngeal crepitus also called as moore's crackle and if laryngeal crepitus or this moore crackles is absent is absent it is called as boca sign also called as trotter sign very 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 important boca sign or trotter sign if laryngeal crepitus is absent it is called as boca sign or trotter sign trotter is a very famous personality i'll discuss what are the different things that trotter has given but first of all let us focus on this thing it is boca sign and trotter sign and it is seen in please write down the conditions this is very important it is seen in post cricoid laryngeal carcinoma or retro pharyngeal abscess fine fine or in prevertebral abscess fine fine post recorded laryngeal carcinoma or retro pharyngeal abscess or prevertebral abscess in all these three condition you'll see this sign called as boca sign or trotter sign if you remember this word trotter i want to ask you what is trotter's method used for like this trotter's word has come what is trotter's method used for answer this trotter's method trotter's method trotter's method anyone i'll come to trotter stride have patience first of all answer what is trotter's method used for trotter's method anyone trotter's method trotter's method what is trotter's method i am doing it right now trotter's method trotter's method you remember trotter's method yes 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 110% trotter's method trotter's method bachche trotter's method it is used trotter's method is used yes 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 it is used in nasal bleeding epistaxis trotter's method is used in nasal bleed epistaxis yes yes perfect to prevent the nasal bleed i use trotter's method fine everyone has answered very good now tell me now tell me now tell me trotter's triad trotter's triad is seen in which disease i'll write it down trotter's triad is seen in which disease don't worry i have a question for trotter's triad also i'll discuss trotter's triad in detail first tell me trotter's triad is seen in which disease trotter's triad is seen in nasopharyngeal carcinoma if you remember well and good if you don't please remember trotter word is very important trotter ke teen cheez hain bachche jo aapko yaad rakhne hai trotter three things are very important for trotter one is trotter sign that is in front of your screen which is seen in post recorded laryngeal carcinoma retropharyngeal and prevertebral abscess trotter's method trotter's method is this for epistaxis you remember and trotter's triad trotter's triad is yes very rightly said for npc fine 
let us go ahead let us go ahead i'll discuss trotter stride i know you know the what is trotter stride let us go to the next question there is a question on trotter stride also fine anterior most ethmoidal air cell is called as answer please next question anterior most ethmoidal air cell is called as yes 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 very rightly said dr shivendra he is very much active in fact many of the students are very much active that is a positive sign for your clearance i hope so it comes out as much good as possible anterior most ethmoidal air cell is called as anterior most ethmoidal air cell answer this again a mnemonic will come most of the students yes 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 now when easy question comes you are shouting out that's the thing that i want and that is the thing that i was telling you in the starting of the class save time bachche in the questions that do not require time and spend time on the questions that actually require time that is the game believe me i am the recent one of all those faculties who have appeared for your examination i am the re i remember 2019 when i was appearing the only thing that my seniors used to say shubham remember one thing that the game is actually of presence of mind and saving time fine let us see this particular question how i remember is anterior most ethmoidal air cell there are various modifications of ethmoidal air cells you must know agar nasai onodi haller bulla ethmoidalis i know you also know how i used to remember and i know most of you also remember in this same particular way if you understand little bit of hindi 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 fine what is aage 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 means anterior aage aage yes so most anterior most ethmoidal air cell most aage aage is aage means anterior aage most anterior most ethmoidal air cell most anterior most ethmoidal air cell agar nasai fine most aage most aage aage is anterior most anterior most ethmoidal air cell is agar nasai cell fine and the answer is agar nasai now let us look at other terminologies let us come to this option d please see please see find no hindi bachche it's actually the mnemonic that i have created i won't speak don't worry don't worry fine let us come to this option d how i remember bulla see the name bulla ethmoidalis see if i'm using the word the great khali it means the great khali you know it he, he must be if you imagine the great khali it is like someone who is huge fine the same word bulla ethmoidalis look at this word bulla hai na bulla ethmoidalis bulla means very large the largest and the most consistent the largest and the most consistent ethmoidal air cell bulla bulla ki ye na bulla bulla it sounds big no bulla ethmoidal is the largest and most consistent ethmoidal air cell the largest and the most consistent ethmoidal air cell is bulla ethmoidal is fine bulla ethmoidal is now let us look at onodi and haller cell what is the keyword that they will use for onodi c fine c c this word o n o n stands for optic nerve the ethmoidal air cell which is in close proximity to the optic nerve answer is onodi cell see the name onodi o n onodi o n starts with o n the ethmoidal air cell which is in close proximity to the optic nerve it is onodi cell the ethmoidal air cell which is in close proximity yes it is onodi cell fine fine these are the modifications of ethmoidal air cells you must know of and lastly haller cell i am 100% sure if they are asking for haller cell they will use this word only what haller cell is haller cell is a cell which is present in the floor of the orbit floor of the orbit or they may use roof of the maxillary sinus roof of maxillary 
sinus. Fine. You have to remember these modifications of ethmoidal air cells. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot forget these. Agarnezai, age, age, fine. It is the most anterior, most ethmoidal air cell. Onodi, O N, it is in close proximity to the optic nerve. Haller cell, they'll use the word floor of the orbit or roof of maxillary sinus. That's it, done. Bulla ethmoidalis, bulla sounding. You know, bulla, most consistent, largest ethmoidal air cells. These are the modifications of ethmoidal air cell. You have to, you have to, have to remember. Now, because I have to teach some extra points also related to this question. Actually, I should have hide this particular thing. Fine. Can you appreciate conca bullosa? What is conca bullosa? Can anyone define it for me? What is conca bullosa? What is conca bullosa? Can anyone define it for me? 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 What is conca bullosa? Conca bullosa? Conca bullosa, can anyone define it? I know star mark, dear, but we are having that IQ little bit above the moron level. I know the fact that if I am showing a star, that means that is conca bullosa. What is the definition? What is the definition? Basically, what is conca bullosa? Listen to me very carefully. Conca bullosa is basically pneumatization. Pneumatization. Or you can say air in the middle turbinate. Pneumatization or air in the middle turbinate. See, I have marked this thing with red. This thing in red is your inferior turbinate. And now this thing in blue. This is actually your middle turbinate. But oh my god. Can I see some air inside middle turbinate? Yes, sir. And they have been marked with this asterisk or star. Fine. This is air inside middle turbinate. Air inside middle turbinate can also be called as pneumatization of middle turbinate. Fine. And this is called as conca bullosa. Remember, conca bullosa is pathological. It is not normal. Conca bullosa is pathological. The patient will have complaints of nasal obstruction. Fine. 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 Let us see the most sort of lovable question by the FMG candidates also and also the NB have been asked number of times. So yes, we shall be answering it. I know the fact that you will be shouting out answers in this particular question. Which among the following is the treatment methodology for atrophic rhinitis? Because this topic is very important. That's why I had to bring this thing once again so that we can revise it. Fine. Which among the following is the treatment method for atrophic rhinitis? Which among the following is the treatment methodology for atrophic rhinitis? Very rightly said by number of students, it is Young's operation bar modified Young's operation. You just have to see this word Young. Fine. Atrophic rhinitis. Atrophic rhinitis. You remember atrophic rhinitis? Atrophy of the nasal mucosa, turbinates, nerves, blood vessels, everything. Fine. I'll discuss atrophic rhinitis. Yes. People are shouting. Klepshella, Ozaniye. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, you know the fact that there, it cannot be mastodectomy. Not fess at all. But fess is basically more commonly used for sinusitis, chronic sinusitis. Functional endoscopic sinus surgery. As the name suggests, functional endoscopic sinus surgery. Fine. Young's operation or modified Young's operation are the surgical methodologies for atrophic rhinitis. Let us see this particular topic, atrophic rhinitis. I know the fact that you know it. That's why let us revise it. You, If you know this mnemonic, well and good. In fact, no need to remember this mnemonic also. Fine, it is hernia. Basically, the risk factor for atrophic rhinitis, H stands for hereditary. Fine. E stands for endocrine. 
fine r stands for racial factors n stands for nutritional factors fine i'll discuss i later and a stands for autoimmune and believe me i don't know why i have written these things nobody will ask any of these hernia the only thing that they will ask is the thing i in between this i is infection and which infection it is the infection by none other than klebsiella ozaniae that's why this disease is also called as ozania disease atrophic rhinitis is caused by this particular agent klebsiella ozaniae that's why it is also called as ozania disease yes i know the fact there is atrophy of everything very large huge nasal cavities roomy nasal cavities crusting is formed inside klebsiella ozaniae is there inside the patient will have merciful anosmia why i use this word merciful anosmia the patient does not know that the patient is producing a very foul breath that's why mercy rahim as a bolte na ke bhagwan aisi bimari kisi ko na de ke patient is suffering from a disease and the patient cannot appreciate that patient is producing a very foul breath from his or her nasal cavity i'll tell you i have seen basically two to three clinical cases of atrophic rhinitis till date in my life all three were females fine fine merciful anosmia i want to just add or ask one thing add or ask one thing from your pharmacology what is the drug of choice for all the klebsiellas please answer me this thing what is the drug of choice for all the klebsiellas what is the drug of choice for all the klebsiellas please answer this very carefully what is the drug of choice for all the klebsiella okay my mistake i will uh, what write it in uh, capital letters if you are having some little bit of difficulty that's why i am repeating the points once and once and once and again and again fine someone is asking treatment of conchobulosa bachche basically we do face surgeries anyways let us come to this particular topic it is very 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 important oh my god you cannot make a mistake what is the drug of choice for all the klebsiellas similarly supposedly if i was asking what is the treatment of choice for rhinoscleroma rhinoscleroma was also caused by klebsiella rhinoscleromatis that's why i always say what is the drug of choice for all the klebsiellas the drug of choice for all the klebsiella bachche remember you cannot you cannot forget it you are going for your fmg examination very very just what 20 uh, odd days fine you cannot forget it the drug of choice for all the klebsiella klebsiella whatever variety of klebsiella is there it is always 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 streptomycin with tetracycline you cannot make a mistake in this particular question never 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 for all the klebsiella whether it is klebsiella ozaniae causing this atrophic rhinitis whether it is klebsiella rhinoscleromatis that was causing rhinoscleroma there also drug of choice was streptomycin with tetracycline no cephalosporin no dapsone where is actually the dapsone drug of choice dapsone is the drug of choice in rhinosporidiosis which was caused by rhinosporidium siberi look at your notes that's why i always say the success mantra is only revision of your notes 3 4 whatever number of revisions you can do see your notes i i'm i'm 100% sure to whatever whichever faculty we may study i have huge respect for all the faculties out there in in this particular world everyone puts their maximum effort to their maximum level and 90 to 95% of the content is same it is written in your note just see drug of choice for all the klebsiellas for yes for all the klebsiellas bachche drug of choice for all the klebsiellas is streptomycin with tetracycline it doesn't matter what klebsiella i am talking about drug of choice whenever klebsiella comes it must have been taught either in your pharmacology or microbiology also 
क्लेपशल्ला जहां भी आए बच्चे क्लेपशल्ला इट इज स्टेप्टोमाइसिन विद टेट्रासाइक्लिन If I'm asking rhinoscleroma also there was Klebsiella rhinoscleromatis was the causative agent yes there also the drug of choice is streptomycin with tetracycline dapsone is the drug of choice and rhinosporidiosis caused by rhinosporidium seaberry you must have heard it it is one aquatic protozoa okay cannot cannot make a mistake you cannot if you do not know write it down mark five or six stars whatever number of stars depends upon your what caliber it doesn't matter. fine but you cannot make a mistake in this fine let us see this particular surgery that we do surgery is basically young's operation or modified young's operation if you totally obstruct young's operation partially obstruct modified young's operation if you ask me no need to remember partially or fully obstruct just remember this word young that's it fine do not make a mistake i am telling you do not make a mistake in the drug of choice for all the klebsiellas fine and the new newer methodologies please remember the newer methodologies the newer methodologies for the treatment of yes that's why i am saying just see your notes open your notes it is 100% it would be written there streptomycin and tetracycline yes fine so the newer methodologies the newer methodologies for the treatment of atrophic rhinitis you just have to write it down if a recent question they are putting a recent question recent thing the newer methodologies then this can be asked one is injection teflon and second is very important lotton's laser surgery this is the latest new method fine lotton's laser surgery and injection teflon are the newer methods for atrophic rhinitis that's why i had to include this particular thing i hope this topic is clear please bachche i am seeing the chat continuously please 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 you cannot make a mistake either study see it in a pharmacology microbiology ent notes whatever drug of choice for all the klebsiellas is streptomycin with tetracycline fine some people were answering dapsone no bachche dapsone is the drug of choice in rhinosporidiosis fine rhinosporidiosis sea water salt yes coastal areas Dapsone was the drug of choice there, which was aquatic protozoa. Fine. Let us attend this particular question. This particular question. Fine. Best test for investigating CSF rhinorrhea is best test. I am talking about best test. I can do any test. I can do whatever test. But I am asking the best test. What is the best test for investigation of CSF rhinorrhea? Very common question has been asked in your FMG. It has been asked in NEET PG and INSCT also. But my focus right now is your FMG. A lock कर दिया जाए hundred and ten percent बच्चे A lock ही करेंगे. Yes, it is the beta two transferrin test. Direct question. No need to what go here there where. Fine. Beta two transferrin test is the beta two transferrin test is considered to be the gold standard, the finest best test for CSF rhinorrhea. Rhinorrhea means nasal discharge. If CSF is coming out of the nose, it is called as CSF rhinorrhea. Let us study this particular topic, CSF rhinorrhea. Fine. I want to say this particular thing. Please remember this line. I want to say that ninety percent of the CSF rhinorrhea occurs because of trauma. Ninety percent of the CSF rhinorrhea occurs because of trauma. and of those trauma 90% is because of us because by us only by the surgeons all it is iatrogenic surgical trauma and i'll tell you the surgery it is functional endoscopic sinus surgery we have that what keda or what tinea vermicularis to reach up 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 up, up. we forget that brain is above fine and we just puncture this particular uh, belt of uh, what fovea thymidylis cribriform fluid fine so trauma is the leading cause trauma to where it is cribriform plate and more precisely we have to remember this word fovea ethmoidalis fine and of those 90% trauma it is because of the surgical trauma the functional endoscopic sinus surgery that we do it leads to csf rhinorrhea and believe me if there is a patient of csf rhinorrhea whenever we are residents post graduate re residents we worry oh my god pcs for rhino are bachche relax csf rhinorrhea management is conservative just relax the management is just relax and make the patient relax fine management is conservative fine 
one very important sign that you see it is a image based question it is double ring or halo sign seen in traumatic csf rhinorrhea which is more common double ring or halo sign see this is the typical clinical picture alternative rings of csf with blood this is double ring or halo sign or target sign or whatever sign you want to name it but don't name it as whatever sign it is basically double ring or target sign halo sign fine 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 now because related to trauma we are discussing i want to revise this particular topic also leafoot fracture leafoot fracture fine leafoot fracture you remember there are three types of leafoot fracture type 1 leafoot fracture type 2 leafoot fracture and type 3 leafoot fracture let us revise what is type 1 what is type 1 what is type 1 leafoot fracture see if the fracture line see if the fracture line if the fracture line is going from one side of the maxilla to the tip of nose to the other side of the maxilla if the fracture line is going from one side of the maxilla to the tip of nose to the other side of the maxilla it is type 1 leafoot fracture fine second type 2 leafoot fracture please see if the fracture line is going from one side of the maxilla going upwards along the ala of nose fine to the root of nose and then coming along the ala of the nose fine going from one side of the maxilla to the ala of nose till the root here and then coming in the same pattern this is forming a pyramid yes type 2 fracture this is type 2 leafoot fracture type 2 leafoot fracture type 3 leafoot fracture type 3 leafoot fracture it is the fracture line is going from one side of the orbit again to the root of nose please remember that the root of nose is very close to cribriform root of nose is very close to cribriform cribriform is also lying here see fine and going to the other side of the orbit yes if the image is clear can you see that in type 2 and type 3 my fracture line is going close to the brain close to the cribriform that's why please remember csf rhinorrhea is seen in type 2 and type 3 leafoot fracture not in type 1 see this fracture line is lying here not going here fine type 1 leafoot fracture the fracture line is going here it is not going close to the root of the nose or close to the cribriform that's why we do not see csf rhinorrhea in type 1 this is the fact that you have to remember in type 2 and 3 only see the fracture line see here i'll give it double colors see the fracture line is going close to the cribriform that's why csf rhinorrhea will be seen in type 2 and type 3 leafoot fractures only this is a very important mcq believe me that csf rhinorrhea is seen in type 2 and type 3 yes very rightly said let us discuss these topics that first type 1 leafoot fracture is also called as low maxillary fracture you see very important two signs very important two signs one is floating palate and second is guerin sign which is basically your purplish sort of discoloration in the heart palate fine guerin sign floating palate second you can see the image it is forming a pyramid that's why it is called as pyramidal fracture very easy and the third third please see third it is called as the craniofacial disjunction or craniofacial fracture many of you rightly answered but the important thing is this line this line is very 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 important then in type 2 and type 3 leafoot fractures we see csf rhinorrhea no need to mug it up i am telling you no need to mug it up see the image itself type 1 leafoot fracture is going along the maxilla only see along the maxilla only it is not going above but 2 and 3 it is going above see it is going here it is going here if it is going close to the brain close to the cribriform so csf rhinorrhea will be seen in type 2 and type 3 leafoot fracture fine i hope 
this is clear fine let us see the next question let us see the next question let us see the next question and answer it correctly 18 year old ramesh 18 year old ramesh fell down and had a nasal bone trauma leading to nasal fracture one day back okay one day 24 hours back what shall be the best line of treatment for ramesh options are a b c d open reduction septoplasty wait and watch or the last option anti-inflammatory drugs followed by close reduction please answer this particular thing 18 year old Ramesh fell down and had a nasal bone trauma leading to nasal fracture one day back what shall be the le what, what the best line treatment for Ramesh some are answering C some are answering D for the people who are answering C Bacho, ek cheez batao. If there is a nasal trauma and nasal fracture has occurred, if I just wait and watch, the fractured nasal septum will come in the center automatically by himself or herself or itself. Think about it. Nasal bone fracture has occurred and the septum has deviated and you are thinking just by doing wait and watch, the fracture will correct by himself, herself or itself. Is it like that? Then to bache, orthopedic department shouldn't have been there. Orthopedic department shouldn't have been there. Better to just wait and watch every, every fra fracture will, will, will treat by itself. I'll tell you, this is the very important question that has been previously asked. Many people are answering, many people are also asking, Sir, swelling or symptoms are not mentioned. That's why, Bache, the question is the best line of all the options, which is the best line, which is the best correct answer that we have to choose. It is, it is anti-inflammatory drugs followed by close reduction. I know the fact that you know. Please see, whenever there is a nasal bone fracture, the only thing that I have to see, the only thing that I have to see is edema. Is edema. Very important is edema. If edema is not there, if edema is not there, this is a very beautiful tricking question. Please see. If edema has is not there, then what you have to do is immediate close reduction or digital reduction. Suppose it, the septum is deviated, I'll just, the edema is not there, I immediately put my thumbs, fingers and bring it to center. This is immediate close reduction. This is immediate close reduction. For the people who are asking, sir, swelling was not mentioned, but che, see it is one day back. Do you think since last 24 hours, edema wouldn't have occurred? That is the brain or the trick that you have to apply. One day back, 24 hours have occurred. There is a fracture, I am saying. Fracture is there. And you are thinking that there is no edema. This is the tricky part. Fine. Edema to bacha hogi. Edema, when I, I see these patients almost regularly in my hospital, what we see is, if the patient comes immediately within 1, 2 hours, 3 hours, 4 hours, maximum 5 or 6 hours, then only I have seen that edema is not there. After 6 hours, though, I haven't seen even a single patient that edema is not there. Fine. Edema is there. And what you have to see, that if edema is not there, I'll immediately do the close reduction. I'll immediately put my thumbs and the fingers. It is it is little bit painful. I'll bring it to center. No problem. Let it be painful. I have to treat the patient. But if edema is present, my neck is swelled like anything. How can I do digital reduction? It is humanitarian. On the basis of humanitarian basis also, it is very wrong. The patient is already having swelling, pain. How can I give more and more amount of pain? 
and in fact if i try to put my thumbs or the fingers i cannot hold the septum because swelling is there that's why i have to give anti inflammatory drugs i have to wait for 5 days and then do the reduction and then do the reduction fine then do the reduction i think it is very much clear you have to check for edema if edema is not there then you have to do immediate close reduction but if edema has occurred edema is present i have to what not wait i have to give anti inflammatory drugs what do you think if i wait for how for, i mean for how long should i wait for the swelling to subside i should give some anti inflammatory drugs na i should give some anti inflammatory drugs and then see if after 5 or 7 days if the edema has subsided then i have to do the reduction procedure fine fine i'll discuss one more thing direction of trauma i know the fact that you know the words shevalet jarjave please remember one mnemonic coming to you if you know the fact well and good if you do not know like me i am telling you this particular thing please remember shevalet and jarjave these are the direction of trauma that you have to remember how i used to remember shevalet and jarjave please see how i used to remember i remember the us president john f kennedy j f k john f kennedy jfk john f kennedy john f kennedy jfk jajave fracture trauma is from the front jajave fracture trauma is from the front bachche i have seen most of the time students know that there is something called as shevalet fracture there is something called as jajave fracture trauma is either from the below or from the front but they forget which was from below or which was from the front this is the easy thing that i i i made or remember john f kennedy jfk john f kennedy jajave fracture the trauma is from the front so next is shivalet shivalet is, is from the below shivalet shivalet the trauma is from below some people are asking for the tool but i'll tell you very honestly but because you have asked me i'll tell you the tools that we use are actually valshams and ash forceps but believe me till date hundreds of septal corrections this digital corrections i have done i haven't even a single time used valshams and ash indians we indians tend to use our fingers most of the time our thumb and finger are more than enough to do close reduction rather than using valsham and ash forceps sometimes i don't find valshams and uh, what valsham and ash forceps what i do is just use your thumb na what i have to do i have to just pick this particular septum and break it in the center why to use instruments if i can do it with my thumb you know yeah fine shivalet and jajave clear shivalet and jajave clear jfk john f kennedy jajave fracture the trauma is from the front if it is from the front that means horizontal fine shivalet is from below below means vertical yes fine fine clear chalo let us go ahead let us go ahead generally i'm not i'm not joking i mean ash and valshams i know the fact that we in fact i have taught in my notes also ash and valshams forceps but believe me and you can ask any of the ent specialists doing regular practice every day we do not use ash in fact in my opd also ash and valshams forceps is not there since time immemorial i have started my clinical practice it is not there we use thumb only fine fine chalo but yes you have to remember ash and valshams forceps if they ask fine chalo chalo next question next question next question fine very easy question very easy a 14 year old are my god whenever this 14 year old boy 13 year old boy 15 year old boy this boy 13 14 15 year old ent question bachche answer is always direct first of all better you answer a 14 year old boy came with profuse epistaxis having no history of trauma radiological image is shown identify the disease fine 
fine. I have always seen 13, 14, 15, whenever they are using boy, 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 do not read epistaxis also. 110%. If it's a ENT question, it is 99%, not 99, 110% JNA. Fine. But still, if you see this word epistaxis and 14 year, 13 year, whatever year, 12, 13, 14, 15, this particular juvenile age group, answer is 110% juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. I know that you are answering JNA. Can you name the sign also? Can you name the sign also? Which is this particular sign? Answer this. Which is this sign? What is this particular sign? Then I'll start discussing about juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. Yes, very rightly said. People are answering it loud and clear. It is Holman Miller sign, also called as the antral sign. Holman Miller sign, also called as the antral sign. They'll typically give a history of 13, 14, 15 year old boy coming with profuse epistaxis. There is no history of trauma. Bleeding is like hell. What is your diagnosis? It is juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. Very, very, very important. Fine? Yes. Fine? Fine. Let us talk about juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. See the word juvenile. It is occurring in juvenile age group. Nasopharyngeal. The tumor is somewhere close to the nasopharynx. Angiofibroma. Angiofibroma. This tumor is having angio, that means blood vessel, and fibro, fibroma, that means fibrous component. What is the most common site of occurrence of juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma? It is phenopalatine foramen. If you people know well and good, what is the artery of epistaxis? Artery of epistaxis is also sphenopalatine artery. Anyways, phenopalatine foramen, it is the most common site for the occurrence of juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. Juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. We see a characteristic sign called as the Holman-Miller sign, also called as the antral sign. What is Holman-Miller or antral sign? Please see. This is my posterior wall. This is my posterior wall of maxillary sinus. It is going ahead. It is anteriorly bowing. The anterior bowing of the posterior wall of maxillary sinus, it is basically your Holman-Miller or antral sign. Fine? First point. Second point that you have to remember. Third point. It is also called as dumbbell tumor because of its growth to the pterygopalatine fossa or infratemporal fossa. It is also called as the dumbbell tumor. And you know, it gives a frog face deformity also. Anyways, it is called as the dumbbell tumor, frog face deformity. Very important. These points, each and every point is very, very, very important. Fine. Fine. And lastly, very less likely that they'll ask this thing when we are operating juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma nobody will ask i'm just telling it to you we do basically most of the times medial maxillectomy surgeries we have to do a pre-op embolization so that the blood vessel is not supplying the tumor so that there is less bleeding and what is the blood vessel in which we do pre-op embolization, I know 110% in your notes it must be written, it is maxillary artery. This is the thing, If it, is, I mean it is good if you remember this thing. What is pre-op embolization? First let me explain it to you. Pre-op embolization is supposedly this is the tumor. A blood vessel is supplying this tumor. If I operate this particular tumor, then I know the fact it will bleed a lot. Fine. So to avoid bleeding or if I want that less bleeding should be there, I'll do a pre-op embolization of this vessel so that the blood is not going to, to this tumor and I take this tumor out and less bleeding is there. That is basically a pre-op embolization. And in which blood vessel I do? Just remember maxillary artery. Fine. Yes, very rightly said that why it is more commonly seen in boys only. Again, it is a theory or a hypothesis that this tumor is somewhat related to testosterone. Fine. Okay.
Juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma topic clear. Let me discuss. I was telling you this particular thing. Nasopharyngeal carcinoma. I have to discuss this particular topic. Nasopharyngeal carcinoma. I just teach four or five points for nasopharyngeal carcinoma that are being asked and that will be asked. Firstly, this tumor is highly, highly, highly radiosensitive. This is the first point. If you want, you can write these points. These are the five points that they can ask for nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Firstly, that this tumor is highly radiosensitive tumor. That's why radiotherapy or chemo radiotherapy is the treatment of choice for this particular nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Fine. Please remember this thing. It is highly radiosensitive. In fact, uh, I shouldn't say this thing, but uh, someone shouldn't suffer for, from cancer. But if God is making a patient suffering from cancer, better give nasopharyngeal carcinoma. It is highly radiosensitive. I have seen these clinical patient of nasopharyngeal carcinoma in my life. Very radiosensitive tumor. Just give one or two shots of chemo radiotherapy. Patient is fine like anything. Fine. It is associated with which etiology? Epstein-Barr virus. Epstein-Barr virus, you remember? Your kissing disease, infectious mononucleosis, microbiology, remember? Epstein-Barr virus. Epstein-Barr virus. I remember my microbiology when I was studying in 2019 for it. Epstein-Barr virus. It is related to what? Infectious mononucleosis, kissing disease. Fine. Site from where the nasopharyngeal carcinoma arises, fine, it is this third point, fossa of Rosenmuller. Fossa of Rosenmuller. This is the third point. This is the site from where the nasopharyngeal carcinoma arises. And the last, not the last, the fourth point that you have to remember, Trotter's triad. Not Trotter's method, not Trotter's sign. It is Trotter's tried and I know the fact that most of you know this mnemonic. How I say nasopharyngeal carcinoma? Nasopharyngeal carcinoma. This is the mnemonic. Nasopharyngeal carcinoma and this is the mnemonic of Trotter's tried. Neuralgia, palatal palsy and conductive hearing loss. This is the mnemonic. NPC, NPC stands for nasopharyngeal carcinoma. NPC, nasopharyngeal carcinoma. And the mnemonic is also neuralgia, palatal palsy, conductive hearing loss, NPC. This is your trotter stride. I know the fact, most of you know this mnemonic. For the people who have studied this particular topic, NPC, nasopharyngeal carcinoma, NPC. And the mnemonic of trotter stride is also NPC, nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Neuralgia. Palatal palsy, conductive hearing loss. Please remember, palatal palsy is ipsilateral. It is ipsilateral palatal palsy. Do not make a mistake. It is not contralateral. It is ipsilateral palatal palsy. This was the fourth point that you have to remember. And the fifth point and the last point that you have to remember for nasopharyngeal carcinoma is, Bache, please, please, please remember, aap isme galti nahi kar sakte. The most common presentation of a patient of nasopharyngeal carcinoma. The most common presentation of a patient of nasopharyngeal carcinoma, it is lymphadenopathy. Also, you can say neck swelling. Neck nodes, lymph nodes, lymphadenopathy, you can say it at lymphadenopathy or neck swelling or neck nodes, anything that you can say. This is the most common presentation. Fine. These are the five points you cannot forget for nasopharyngeal carcinoma. First thing, it is highly radiosensitive tumor. That's why chemo radiotherapy is the treatment of choice for NPC. Secondly, it is associated with Epstein-Barr virus. Second point. Third point is, it is the site from where NPC arises. It is fossa of Rosenmuller. Fossa of Rosenmuller. Fourth point is the Trotter's triad. NPC nasopharyngeal carcinoma, neuralgia, palatal palsy, Ipsilateral palatal palsy and conductive hearing loss. And lastly, fifth point is the most common presentation. Please remember the most common presentation. I'll write it down. The most common presentation 
I know the fact some of you are finding it difficult to understand the most beautiful handwriting in this planet Earth. But still, I'll repeat, most common presentation of the patient of nasopharyngeal carcinoma is lymphadenopathy or neck swelling. Fine. Let I told you that the question was of what JNA. But my conscious says that if given a chance, teach most of the things to students. This is the conscious, uh, what my particular conscious that says to me. So, question was of JNA, but options I had kept in such a way so that I can teach other topics also. Fine. This is your favorite, rhinosporodiosis. Most of you see this word letter S. S stands for South India. S stands for C and the causative agent. See the disease. This is the presentation. Rhinosporidiosis. S stands for South India. It is seen in South India. S stands for C. Fine. And S also stands for Rhinosporidium. Seabury. The causative agent. Rhinosporidium. Seabury. A granulomatous condition of nose. Rhinosporidiosis giving a mulberry, shahtoot, mulberry or strawberry-like appearance. Yes, mulberry or a strawberry-like nasal mass protruding from a nasal cavity, mostly unilateral, seen in southern parts of the India. Why? Because they, there are presence of coastal regions. See, it needs that. Why? Because it is caused by an organism called as Rhinosporodium, S stands for sporodium, S stands for sea berry, fine. And you cannot make a mistake in this particular point that this is what, what is it? Is it aquatic protozoa or fungus? Please answer. What is it? Aquatic protozoa or fungus? What is it? Is it aquatic protozoa or fungus? Please answer this particular thing. I won't write it until unless many of you answer. I know bleeds on touch. I know it is sensitive to touch. Yes, very rightly said. I was waiting for this. It is aquatic protozoa. Aquatic protozoa. Rhinosporodium seabury. Aquatic protozoa. Fine. And the drug of choice. You remember, some of the people were answering drug of choice for Klebsiella as Dapsone. But very wrong. Dapsone is here. Dapsone. Fine. Dapsone. Uh, I remember my what? Pharmacology and microbiology. I remember my days. Dapsone I used to study in leprosy also. Just say, uh, am I right or wrong? I remember it was for leprosy also. Yes. Dapsone was also used for the treatment in leprosy. Fine. Dapsone. It is the drug of choice for this particular thing. Fine. Dapsone is the drug of choice for rhinosporidiosis followed by excision. Fine. Or excision followed by dapsone. Fine. 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 Yes, yes, yes. I always tend to say this particular fact. And I feel that most of the faculties will accept this fact. The most knowledgeable doctor... Believe me, the most knowledgeable doctor and I genuinely bow down head, my head towards you people. The most knowledgeable, the doctor who is carrying the maximum knowledge is the doctor who is preparing for FMG, NEET, PG or INICT examination. But you are genuinely great tell, because I know the fact that I know my speciality or someone knows their speciality, you are knowing all the 19 specialities. I mean, this is always tremendous. Fine. So, always this is something which we bow down upon. Fine. So, true about the given image is all accept. Let us see this particular question. True about the given image is all accept. True about... My God. Fine. True about the given image is all except. Very rightly, people are shouting out answers. Yes, 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 110%. But the answer is, the answer is option D. I know the fact. 
I know the fact, but let us discuss the. I know the, you people are bubbling out of knowledge, but still, let me as a small person discuss some of the facts with you. Fine, tympanic membranes. Let us talk about. Fine, tympanic membrane, and its part. Fine. Fine, tympanic membrane and its part. Fine. Chalo, tympanic membrane and its parts. Part stensa fars flacida. We'll discuss. Tympanic membrane. Remember, tympanic membrane is divided into lower two third, lower two third, which is called as part stensa. Lower two third, which is called as part stensa, and upper one third. Upper one third, which is called as pars flaccida. Lower two third, which is called as pars tensa. Upper one third, which is called as pars flaccida. Fine. Upper one third, which is called as pars flaccida. Fine. So remember, upper one third pars flaccida. It is also called as shrapnel's member uh, membrane. You know the fact. Fine. Pars tensa. Please remember, it is actually why it is pars tensa because it is made up of three layers. It is made up of three layers: outer epithelial, middle fibrous, and inner mucosal layer. And that middle fibrous layer is absent in pars flaccida. Middle fibrous layer is absent in pars flaccida. That's why it is flaccid. That's why it is flaccid. Fine. The most concave part of the tympanic membrane is called as umbo. I know you know this fact. And lastly, cone of the light is formed in antero inferior quadrant cone of light is formed in antero inferior quadrant cone of light is formed in antero inferior quadrant and lastly how will you decide the side of tympanic membrane if you see the cone of light in 5 o'clock position it is right side tympanic membrane and if you see the cone of light in 7 o'clock position it is left side tympanic membrane see in this question the cone of light is in 5 o'clock position it is right side tympanic membrane it is not the left side tympanic membrane so accept this is the answer let us go ahead answer this particular question chalo given condition is given condition is given condition is given condition is this particular given condition what a what let us go ahead given condition is given condition chalo this particular given condition bachche this is very rightly said by most of you it is pre auricular sinus please remember what is pre auricular sinus you remember pre auricular sinus is abnormality in the fusion of hilox of of his yes it is abnormality in the fusion of hilox of his fine abnormality in the fusion of hilox of his leads to a condition called as pre auricular sinus pre auricular sinus fine pre auricular sinus remember bachche please do not make a mistake i want to show you one thing if sh they show you an orifice here in this ear particular region it is pre auricular sinus but if they show you an orifice in the neck bachche this is call oral fistula do not make a mistake call oral call oral fistula you cannot make a mistake in this call oral if they show you orifice in the neck it is call oral fistula call means collar bone neck region fine pre auricular sinus they'll show you an orifice here fine clear chalo one very simple thing that i want to discuss can you identify this particular image just for your revision purpose can you identify this particular thing can anyone tell me what is this particular thing in which anti helix is absent the condition here where the anti helix is absent this particular condition is called as bachcho remember it is called as bat ear bat ear is the condition where anti helix is absent you have to re remember other two conditions also wildermuth and mozart ear fine wildermuth and mozart ear in wildermuth helix is absent and in mozart 
in Mozart there is abnormal mixing of helix and anti helix and believe me again my gut feeling says if they are asking you any pinna abnormality like this bat wildermuth or mozart 99% they'll show you bat ear only fine bat ear and darwin's tubercle you know darwin's tubercle it is something physiological darwin's tubercle i'll tell you 40% of the individuals in this world are having darwin's tubercle it is normal physiological earlier it was thought if there is presence of darwin's tubercle that the, then that it was thought that they are more intelligent that's why this darwin word was given darwin's tubercle but later on it to it, it came out that no i mean it is totally not related to intelligence it's normal or physiological fine this is darwin's tubercle fine darwin's tubercle so if you are having darwin's tubercle we shouldn't feel like we are the special one anyways let us look at this particular question gilles test is done in gilles test is done in see the direct question very direct question very direct question gilles test is done in gilles test is done in gilles test is done in yes very rightly people are answering it correctly yes it's a direct question gilles test is done it is the very good test for autosclerosis gilles test is done for autosclerosis yes very rightly said gilles test is done for autosclerosis fine i just want to add on to these particular points i know the fact that you know rene's test you know weber's test you know absolute bone conduction test i know the fact it is written in your notes but two important tests that are also very commonly asked for your mcq purposes are your gilles test and bing test please remember gilles test is for autosclerosis and bing test is for snhl please remember these are the star mark points because in your notes most of the times rene's webers and abc is being known by most of the candidates but sometimes they forget what is gilles and bing's test they are based on sigillization so you have to remember gilles test is the test for autosclerosis and bing test is the test for sensory neural hearing loss fine yes stepidotomy stepidectomy i'll come to autosclerosis don't worry every topic has been covered so don't worry have patience have little bit of patience but i'll i want to i want to i'll i'll teach i want to tell you something even if dekho try to understand this particular fact if these 25 questions and the content that i have prepared in these 25 questions makes you revise the complete ent and if it takes half an hour extra but it actually does not matter i should have been more worried and i should have planned that i'll finish this everything in within 2 hours and i'll go back to my home but no believe me when i was preparing this the only thing that i had kept in my mind is that every topic should be revised and this is our last ent revision with me then just do one more revision in between and go for it that is it that is it fine so even if we give half an hour 45 minutes extra but please remember this is the time i am giving for your examination not my examination fine so have that courage let us boost ourselves no no matter i mean if we eat dinner half an hour later or drink water uh, what 10 or 15 minutes later it 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 does not matter but believe me i promise you personally complete ent at least 90 95% of the ent will be revised that is my promise for sure anyways b type of tympanogram is seen in please answer b type of tympanogram is seen in very very rightly said don't worry about let me finish all these 25 questions and if you people are having doubt in air conduction bone conduction pure tone odometry or any topic i'll discuss and if if still you have some topics i'm just giving a little bit time in between just 10 seconds if you still have doubts believe me just 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 ping me just message me whatever doubt question you are having you give thousands of question to me you just post me you just ask me i'll within maximum by 24 hours i'll reply it to you on instagram ent underscore by underscore dr dr shubham fine 
just 10 seconds I've given in between because every day I get 10 or 15 questions by each and every candidate. I try my level best, whatever I have to give. To make you understand, if I have to post a short video also, I'll do it. The only thing that I want in return for your benefit is your FMG clearance. Genuinely, I, I say the fact, you are not doing it for, I know people motivate you for that we are doing for parents, for this, for that. No, but you are doing it for yourself. That's it. Nobody will be happy or motivated except for you. Fine. Let us come back to this particular question. I genuinely tend to say harsh, but genuinely sometimes harsh is actually the truth. Fine. B type of tympanogram is seen in serosotitis media, very rightly said, or glue ear. Fine. Fine. B type of tympanogram. B type of tympanogram. Fine. B type of tympanogram. B type of tympanogram. Fine. B type of tympanogram is seen in serosotitis media or glue ear. Fine. Let us study impedance audiometry. Impedance audiometry is actually impedance audiometry is actually a combination of tympanometry and stapedial reflex impedance audiometry is a combination of tympanometry and stapedial reflex the only only question that they can ask for stapedial reflex is at what decibel do i see stapedial reflex at what decibel do i see stapedial reflex it is greater than 70 decibel that's it they won't ask any other question from stapedial reflex the only question they ask is at what decibel do we see stapedial reflex? It is greater than 70 decibel. That's it. Now, let us talk about tympanometry. Tympanometry are these graphs. The graphs that we plot between compliance and pressure. Let us discuss each and every graph and you will remember it. See, can you see this graph A? Can you see this graph A? This graph A is normal. This graph A is normal. Fine. This graph A is normal. The only thing that you have to remember is A that is normal. Fine. Now let us see what is A D. Please remember if the graph is more deep, what is the meaning of this D? It's actually deep. The graph is more deep. The curve is more deep. Please remember the curve is more deep. This AD, this D actually stands for deep. People answer it as disruption or dislocation. No, but this D actually means deep. And the examples, yes, very rightly said, it is seen in D stands for deep. D stands for dislocation of ossicles. Dislocation or disruption of ossicles. I'll see a D type of graph. Then a S type of graph. See A S. See this A S. S actually stands for opposite to deep is shallow. Is this S actually stands for shallow? A S actually stands S stands for actually shallow. Fine. Remember this S actually stands for shallow. It will be seen in auto sclerosis. See, it is having that letter S. Auto sclerosis. Fine. Auto sclerosis, auto spongiosis, tympano sclerosis. That letter S will be there. But most commonly they'll ask AS auto sclerosis. Fine. Now let us see the graph type B and type C. But remember flat curve is type B seen in serous otitis media also called as glue ear. Serous otitis media also called as glue ear fine and type c yes very rightly said it is seen in eustachian tube dysfunction eustachian tube dysfunction fine ad seen in dislocation disruption of ossicles as seen in autosclerosis type b seen in serous otitis media glue ear and type C seen in eustachian tube dysfunction, that is it. What is type C? Actually the curve, the normal curve shifts more towards left side, negative side. Fine. Let us answer this particular question. Let me see who all answer this thing perfectly rightly. Fine. Let us see this particular question. 
The following investigation is the investigation of choice for. Can anyone recognize SP, AP? SP actually stands for anyone? Summation potential. AP stands for action potential. So if I'm using these words SP, AP, what is SPAP? Summation potential and action potential. So if SP by AP ratio, SP by AP ratio is less than 0 0.3, it is normal. If SP by AP ratio is less than 0 0.3, that means it is normal. And if SP by AP ratio, it is greater than 0 0.45, it gives a diagnosis of Meniere's disease. So the answer to this question, the investigation is actually, elect what is this particular investigation? It is basically your electrocochleography. This investigation is electrocochleography. People are answering rising curve, but this is not pure tone audiometry graph. This is the tricky part. See the investigation SP by AP, summation potential, action potential. This is not rising curve of pure tone audiometry that I am showing. It is basically your electrocochleography. And if you know, electrocochleography is the investigation of choice in Meniere's disease. Fine. Electrocochleography, this investigation SP by AP is actually the investigation of choice for Meniere's disease. Fine. Remember, Meniere's disease. Meniere's disease, SP by AP ratio greater than 0 0.45 gives a diagnosis of Meniere's disease. So this investigation is electrocochleography. Electrocochleography for Meniere's disease. Do you remember this investigation? This investigation, next part, do you remember this investigation? This investigation is none other than BERA. BERA stands for Brainstem Evoked Response Audiometry. Brainstem Evoked Response Audiometry. Brainstem Evoked Response Audiometry. BERA, the only, only question that they are asking for BERA. 110 times they ask only one question, which is the largest wave. Please remember, this is the question that they are asking every time. Brainstem evoked response odometry. Fifth is the largest wave, the wave with the maximum amplitude and is corresponds to L. Remember L, L stands for lateral lemniscus. Since time, yes, E. coli may you people are answering. Since time immemorial, I don't know why. The only question that they are asking for Bera is that fifth wave is the largest wave. Fifth wave is the largest wave that corresponds to lateral meniscus. I am waiting for the day because it's written in my notes and I want that this question comes only from this particular notes. I am waiting for the day when will they ask this particular thing that one is most sensitive. They are always asking wave 5, wave 5, wave 5, wave 5. Please remember. Fine. Please, please, please remember. Chalo. Let us go ahead to the next question. Let us go ahead to the next question. And with this question, I'll revise autosclerosis. Now with every question coming, I'll revise every important ear thing. Short sign is seen in. Answer. Short sign. What is short sign? If you are answering the option correctly, I am writing what is short sign parallelly. Pinkish appearance of tympanic membrane, flamingo pink. Very rightly, you people are answering it very rightly, perfectly rightly. Pinkish appearance of tympanic membrane, also called as the flamingo pink appearance, also called as the short sign. It is seen, yes, it is seen in autosclerosis. Very perfect, very perfect. I am glad and happy to see the response from your side. Yes, very rightly said, autosclerosis. But just if I discuss this autosclerosis before 
going ahead with autosclerosis let me share you the mnemonic for autosclerosis then i'll teach the complete autosclerosis please listen to me can you see this letter s coming in between it gives thousands of thing first thing c please remember as type of tympanogram as type of tympanogram this letter s as type of tympanogram fine remember as type of tympanogram then uh, next s thing that stapedotomy stapedotomy is the treatment of choice is the treatment of choice stapedotomy it's basically a surgery so s s s please remember autosclerosis as type of tympanogram yes and stapedotomy which is a surgical procedure it is the treatment of choice please remember that autosclerosis is more commonly seen in females remember autosclerosis is more commonly seen in females it is bilateral the most important predisposing factors for autosclerosis remember only two things one is pregnancy and second is measles pregnancy measles pregnancy is the first thing that you have to remember second is measles now do you people remember van der hove syndrome you must have studied in your orthopedics and your ophthalmology also ent ortho ophthalm come together it is blue sclera with osteogenesis imperfecta with autosclerosis yes blue sclera with osteogenesis imperfecta with autosclerosis is simply your van der hove syndrome yes i know the fact you know yes definitely very good fine s one more s is this schwartz sign you remember number of s are there in this particular thing s is schwartz sign also called as the flamingo pink sign please remember now the next thing that you have to remember very important points i am revising all these particular points because i know the fact you know but still we should better discuss these points paracusis will see what is paracusis will see patient hears better in noisy surroundings patient hears better that female patient hears better in noisy surroundings if you want to know the reason it is actually because of masking but still nobody will ask you the reason patient hears better in noisy surroundings this is paracusis villisi next thing what is cahard's notch let us answer what is cahard's notch what is cahard's notch it is a characteristic dip at 2000 hertz a characteristic dip seen at 2000 hertz that is cahard's notch a characteristic dip seen in pure tone odometry at 2000 hertz it is cahard's notch what is the site most common site of autosclerosis yes it is foot plate of stepes and the better word is fistula antifenestra most of the time foot plate of stepes will be there in the option but if fistula antifenestra is in the option better mark fistula antifenestra it is the best correct answer sometimes you will feel in the question that there are two answer supposedly fistula antifenestrum and foot plate of stepes both are there in the option please i have seen in the neat pg examination also mark fistula antifenestrum fine next thing yes as type of tympanogram yes as type of tympanogram is seen i have explained as which is shallow curve fine very rarely asked if the autosclerosis is in the active phase then sodium fluoride can be given as treatment sodium fluoride can be given as treatment but the very 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 important thing that you cannot forget that the treatment is actually surgery that is stapedotomy or stapedectomy preferably stapedotomy fine preferably stapedotomy it is seen that carhart notch disappears immediately after stapedotomy surgical methodology stapedotomy is the treatment of choice for carhart notch fine chalo let us what raise the level of question and let us see the next disease coming to your screen vertigo in loud sound is called as please answer vertigo in loud sound is called as please answer vertigo in loud sound is called as 
vertigo in loud sound is called as very 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 correct 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 very perfect perfect vertigo in loud sound seen characteristically in meniere's disease yes 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 it is tulio's phenomena how i say tulio vertigo in loud sound i know it is a pathetic methodology but i genuinely don't have any other i whenever i use uh, this thing in the live classes also there also i say this thing tulio what i go in loud sound fine to leo what i go in loud sound these three features first three features are seen in what your minier's disease paracusis will see was seen in otosclerosis let us see the next disease coming to your screen minier's disease fine i want to tell you something whenever i say otosclerosis otosclerosis as stands for surgery here m actually stands for medical management fine medical management minier's disease medical management please remember fine it is mainly managed medically fine it is a unilateral disease i know the fact gv are just revising i know you know minier's much better than me at this particular stage i just want to revise it is a unilateral disease with fluctuating deafness also called as endolymphatic hydrops basically endolymphatic sac is filled with endolymph lots of endolymph and when there is lots of endolymph inside the endolymphatic sac it gives these particular symptoms how i remember it how i remember it you know have you ride this particular bike tvs tvs apache you know the name of the company tvs tvs yes t v s please 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 remember you cannot these three are the typical clinical features tvs 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 bike tvs apache tvs of minier's disease and the onset is also in the form of tvs t stands for tinnitus v stands for vertigo and s stands for sensory neural hearing loss tvs T tinnitus vertigo and sensory neural hearing loss first of all tinnitus comes then vertigo and then sensory neural hearing loss please you cannot forget it why i am telling you this supposedly the onset of symptoms is reverse if it is svt if it is reversed if it is svt it is called as reverse meniere's also called as larmoy syndrome very important very important you cannot forget tvs tinnitus vertigo sensory neural hearing loss it is for the meniere's disease and if we reverse it svt i mean sensory neural hearing loss is coming first after that vertigo and after that tinnitus it is larmoy syndrome also called as reverse meniere's you cannot forget this particular thing you cannot forget fine i won't discuss much about webers they won't ask but yes the thing that they can ask is i have already discussed things are coming again and again ecog electrocochleography ecog electrocochleography that summation potential by action potential we have discussed it is the investigation of choice for minier's disease ecog electrocochleography remember i have discussed electrocochleography sp by ap ratio yes you remember sp by ap ratio if it is greater than 0.45 it directly gives a diagnosis of minier's disease fine so ecog electrocochleography is the what investigation of choice for minier's disease then we have discussed tulio's phenomena we have discussed tulio's phenomena tulio that is what i go in loud sound fine now let us see what is tomarkin's crisis whenever we see a patient of minier's disease the patient will walk and because of vertigo the patient will fall down whenever there is history of drop attacks patient falls down there is history of drop attacks it is called as tomarkin's crisis tomarkin's crisis fine next thing 
I am revising it with you continuously, continuously, continuously. Yes, it is a previously asked question. One very candidate rightly said, there is a low frequency rising curve in seen in pure tone audiometry. Low frequency rising curve. That is in pure tone audiometry, you have to remember. Now let us see, what is diplacusis will is say? Acusis means sound. Di means two. There is perception of two sounds. Why? Because this disease is unilateral. My one ear is having Meniere's disease. My one ear is normal. So if a sound comes, Meniere's will hear something else and my normal ear will sub hear something else. That's why we say diplacusis will is seen in Meniere's disease again. Seen in Meniere's disease. Next thing, next thing. Let us revise again and again. What is recruitment phenomena? Even a one decibel change is felt as a big change. What does this mean? Supposedly, I am giving an intensity of sound 25 decibel to the patient. I increase it to 26 decibel, just one decibel increase. The patient will feel that he or she is hearing 40, 45 decibel. Even a one decibel change will be felt as a big change by the patient. This is called as recruitment phenomena. Number of times this has been asked. Very, very important recruitment phenomena seen in Meniere's disease. Very recently, they have started asking on glycerol test. What is basically glycerol test? It is a test for Meniere's disease. It is basically a dehydrating agent. So if I give a tablet of glycerol, what happens is it dehydrates. It takes the complete water. It takes the complete water from everywhere and excretes it out. So the patient hears better. So it is a test sort of used nowadays, but actually telling you not used nowadays. It's just for your MCQ purpose. We just do, I particularly do just e electrocochlography and just diagnose Meniere's disease. Fine. Anyways, treatment, I have told you it is medical management. I have to give vestibular suppressant. I'll say take low salt diet. Fine. I'll give some diuretics. You remember diuretics like furosemide and all acetazolamide. So that fluid goes out of the body. Less fluid will be there in the sac and the patient will feel better. Very rarely we go for surgery and the surgery name is endolymphatic sac decompression. Very rarely we go for a surgery and the surgery name is endolymphatic sac decompression surgery. Please remember this has also been asked. How will we identify endolymphatic sac? You just have to remember it is present below the Donaldson's line and this Donaldson's line is also very important. Donaldson's line endolymphatic sac is fine 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 actually some uh, one of the candidate had mentioned that we are going uh, what beyond time that's why i had to increase the speed i am more than happy teaching slowly so that i complete my beautiful subject just loud and clear fine i'll decrease little bit of speed so endolymphatic sac decompression surgery is the surgery for this particular Meniere's disease in this the thing that they ask is how if I'm supposedly doing the surgery how will I identify that endolymphatic sac has come fine how will I identify I'll say okay Donaldson's line has come Donaldson's line is a line which actually nobody will ask still I'm telling you because of vermicularis inside my anal canal tinea vermicularis they are continuously itching me and telling me that teach them what is Donaldson's line actually Donaldson's line is a line that goes along lateral semicircular canal. Fine. So the, just below this line, endolymphatic sac is present. This is the question that they ask. And how do, will we identify endolymphatic sac? It is present just below Donaldson's line. Fine. Fine. And lastly, lastly, you can do chemical treatment also like giving gentamicin. Very rarely done. The main treatment is medical just give low salt diet, give some diuretics, steroids and vestibular suppressant. Fine. I hope this is clear. Actually, every question has been created in such a way so that the topics are revised. That is very much important. Fine. Chalo. Fine. Chalo. 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 Someone is saying McEwan's triangle present below. No, but McEwan's triangle is something different. McEwan's triangle ka agar aap mujhse significance poochho, McEwan's triangle ka significance hai mastoid antrum se. Fine. McEwan's triangle ka significance hai mastoid antrum se. It is totally unrelated here. 
Next question. Fine. Hitzel burger sign is seen in. Answer this. Hitzel burger sign is seen in. Hitzel burger sign is seen in. Hitzel burger sign is seen in. Very rightly answered. Hitzel burger sign is seen in a caustic neuroma. See, that's why I am revising topics so you that you know. Okay, autosclerosis may not be taught. We haven't studied this thing in autosclerosis. We haven't studied this thing in Meniere's disease. We are left with two options: a caustic neuroma, very important disease. Hitzel burger sign is seen in a caustic neuroma. What is Hitzel burger sign? We'll discuss Hitzel burger sign. First, let us see this particular disease, a caustic neuroma, also called as vestibular schwannoma. As the name suggests, I am not suggesting. As the name of this disease suggests, it's a oma. It's a tumor that is arising from the schwann cells of the vestibular nerve. See, very easy. It's a oma. It's a tumor that is arising from the schwann cells of the vestibular nerve. Which vestibular nerve? Please remember. Hell important. Do not make a mistake. It is inferior vestibular nerve, most common. Followed by superior and followed by cochlear. These followed by, so no one will ask. They'll ask the most common nerve involved in acoustic neuroma. You have to answer inferior vestibular nerve. You cannot make a mistake in this particular thing. This is a tumor. Yes, it arises from the cerebello pontine angle. It is in fact the most common tumor also of the cerebello pontine angle. The nerve involved is the inferior vestibular nerve. Fine, inferior vestibular nerve. I don't know you remember Bill's bar or not. You remember Bill's bar or not? Fine. You remember Bill's bar or not? Bill's bar is also very important. Fine. Bill's bar separates your superior vestibular nerve to what seventh nerve? You remember? I'll draw a diagram. This is basically your Bill's bar. How I used to remember it? Seven up. You remember the cold drink? Seven up. Seven up. Seven is up. Coke is down. Coke, Coca Cola, Coke is down. Coke is down. Seven up and Coke is down. Seven up, Coke down. Cold drink name seven up and Coke is down. Coca Cola, Coke is down. So seventh cranial nerve is above. Coke cochlear nerve is down. And here it is obviously superior vestibular nerve and below is the inferior vestibular nerve and the question they ask is this is the bill's bar it separates which two nerves it is superior vestibular nerve with the seven up seventh cranial nerve that is the facial nerve fine i hope you remember this what is the most common symptom of acoustic neuroma it is definitely hearing loss or decreased hearing fine hearing loss or decreased hearing rollover and decay will be less commonly asked but yes that point that can be asked very importantly it is bera we have studied that bera you remember wave 5 is the largest wave wave 5 is the largest wave it was asked yes investigation of choices bera fine investigation of choices bera please remember investigation of choices bera i want to genuinely tell you because i have seen first of all i want to tell you Acoustic neuroma, first of all, the patient, this disease is not that common. It is rare. But if you see, you just remember one thing. And you cannot forget this particular thing. That this acoustic neuroma can involve almost all the cranial nerves. Believe me. It can involve almost all the cranial nerves except for cranial number 1 and 2. Very, very, very important. Acoustic neuroma is a tumor that can involve almost all the cranial nerves except for cranial number one, olfactory, and second, that is the optic. Fine. What is the investigation of choice? It is BERA. You cannot forget brainstem evoked response audiometry. BERA is the investigation of choice. And what is the radiological investigation of choice? If this specifically mention radiological, 99% of the time I am 100% sure that they will ask only investigation of choice, BERA for acoustic neuroma but if they specifically mention this radiological word radiological investigation of choice the answer is gadolinium enhanced mri fine gadolinium enhanced mri investigation of choices bera radiological investigation of choices gadolinium enhanced mri what is the treatment treatment is basically surgery 
treatment is basically surgery very rarely this point has been asked but still i have mentioned this if the patient denies surgery we can go for radiotherapy gamma knife radiotherapy clear this is hell very important fine let us see the next question let us be patient let us genuinely i want to tell you be energetic here this is your exam your day your day 26 december live we are sitting together we are together not eating a single bit in fact i feel the fact some may be eating kurkure or chips and listening to my video i am having just a plain water thing which i am enjoying a lot discussing it with you people lighthouse sign is seen in answer lighthouse sign is seen in lighthouse sign is seen in lighthouse sign is seen in but i want to discuss because i have received some of the queries from students i don't know why they are in fact uh, telling me that lighthouse sign csm no but lighthouse sign directly asom cannot make a mistake please remember these two very important sign one is the cartwheel appearance of tympanic membrane one is the cartwheel appearance of tympanic membrane please remember cartwheel appearance of tympanic membrane and lighthouse sign both these sign are seen in asom asom and if you want to ask me the sign of CSOM, it actually CSOM or mastoiditis, you see which sign? It is actually reservoir sign. Fine. Cartwheel sign and lighthouse sign is seen in ASOM. fine please 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 you cannot forget fine in asom you see cartwheel appearance and lighthouse sign in csom and mastoiditis you see reservoir sign fine chalo let us discuss little bit mostly asom serous media occur together stages of asom basically stages of asom nobody will ask still i'll tell you it is basically stage of tubal occlusion then the second stage is stage of pre-separation third stage is stage of separation and fourth stage is stage of resolution fine fourth stage is stage of resolution fine so what happens in acute separative otitis media fine what happens in acute uh, what uh, this particular what happens in acute separative otitis media basically pus or fluid is getting collected in the middle ear fine so what i have to do is sometimes what we do is please remember sometimes what we do is sometimes what we do is sometimes what we do is we give one myringotomy incision we give one myringotomy incision we give her myringotomy incision some are asking how many slides but less number of slides are left after year are done half uh, hardly two or three slides are left let us just focus 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 i'll tell you glomus tumor thing or what is reservoir sign don't worry at all first of all just focus on this thing there is something called as myringotomy what we do in myringotomy we just give an incision in the tympanic membrane and the pus comes out and we put a white this hollow structure inside the middle ear so that the pus comes out and this structure is called as grommet very important thing grommet you cannot you cannot forget grommet you cannot forget grommet this is the typical image that i had to keep fine and lastly someone was asking what is reservoir sign reservoir sign is for csom and mastoiditis what is reservoir sign supposedly discharge is coming out from the patient i suction the discharge out and it will get filled again as if there, it is a reservoir it is getting filled again 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 i don't know from where the fluid is coming again 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 that's why we say this thing as reservoir reservoir sign of mastoiditis or csom fine 
just let us now revise and finish these things quickly answer this particular question आंसर दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन आंसर दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन चलो कम ऑन फटाफट हो गया गेट अप गेट अप गेट अप फोकस 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 नो चेंज इन द सी एस एफ प्रेशर इवन आफ्टर प्रेसिंग द जुगुलर वेन नेम दिस साइन नो चेंज इन द सी एस एफ प्रेशर आई हैव क्रिएटेड लिटिल विट हायर लेवल क्वेश्चन दैट्स वाई आई हैव क्रिएटेड दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ क्वेश्चन सो दैट वेन यूर अपेयर फ्रॉम यूर फॉर दिस एफ एम जी एग्जामिनेशन यू डेफिनेटली फाइंड यू एन टी क्वेश्चन वेरी ईजी बट लेट एस बी प्रिपेयर फॉर द हाइएस्ट लेवल चलो नो चेंज इन द सी एस एफ प्रेशर इवन आफ्टर प्रेसिंग द जुगुलर वेन कौन सा साइन है वट इज दिस दिस इज द रीजन वाई वेन वी मग अप थिंग्स गेट रॉन्ग इसका मतलब बच्चे यू हैव टू रिवाइज यू पीपल आर आंसरिंग बी 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 वाई बी नो चेंज इन द सी एस एफ प्रेशर दैट मी दैट जेनवनली मीन्स यू शुड चेक योर नोट्स दिस इज अ क्लियर इंडिकेटर दैट यू शुड रिवाइज योर नोट्स इफ यू आर आंसरिंग इट बी नो चेंज इन द सी एस एफ प्रेशर इवन आफ्टर प्रेसिंग द जुगुलर वेन इट इज एक्चुअली टॉप ए एयर साइन दिस इज अ क्लियर इंडिकेशन for the people who were saying ke sir how many slides are left or how much time will it take bachche that's why i'm going it slowly so that i what discuss these topics because some of the topics generally your people are making mistake no change in the csf pressure never after pressing the jugular vein is actually tobe air sign fine you remember tobe air sign lateral sinus thrombophlebitis is the next topic and before discussing lateral sinus thrombophlebitis i'll discuss all the intracranial and extracranial complications just revise 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 just i'll discuss or read it out these particular things and uh, i'll just say the definitions of the name sign so that you revise it with me the complications of csm you remember complications of csm complications of csm are divided into intracranial and extra cranial complications intracranial most common intracranial complication meningitis second most common brain abscess subdural aortic hydrocephalus mostly nobody will ask fine the last most important intracranial complication of csom is lateral sinus thrombophlebitis i am just writing it down you better see your notes you see hectic fever grisinger crovebeck tobe and delta what is hectic fever fever whenever the embolus gets released fever just because of the thrombus the fever increases embolus gets released out fever decreases increases decreases increases decreases this is picket fence fever what was grisinger sign bachche grisinger sign was purplish discoloration in the mastoid region purplish discoloration in the mastoid region let us revise it together because you haven't seen your notes thoroughly fine purplish discoloration in the mastoid region fine what was crovebeck sign crovebeck sign were big retinal veins it was related to retina your eye retinal blood vessels retinal veins fine no change in the csf pressure even after pressing the jugular uh, the jugular vein it is tobe air sign fine fine no change in the csf pressure even after pressing the jugular vein is tobe air sign and lastly we see a delta delta is sort of a triangle sign on ct fine if i tell you most of the pe people what is this particular thing it is grisinger sign some may also answer battle sign bachche it will be battle sign no problem you can name it as battle sign but you have to say that there is history of trauma yes some may say that it may be battle sign but for battle sign you need history of trauma fine for battle sign there should be a middle cranial fossa trauma then it will be battle sign if the question says there is no trauma and shows you this purplish discoloration bachcha 110% it is grisinger sign fine fine no change in the csf pressure even after pressing jugular vein is what your tobe air signs now what were the extra cranial complications you remember let me revise these things mastoiditis mastoiditis is the most common overall complication and the most common extra cranial complication then one complication was facial nerve dysfunction facial nerve dysfunction just check your notes just see your notes yes 
then there was one complication labyrinthitis and the last important complication was petrocytis in petrocytis you see a triad called as gradenigos triad gradenigos triad or gradenigos triad i am just making you revise your notes petrocytis gradenigos triad or gradenigos triad it is fifth and sixth nerve palsy with ear discharge fine chalo now abscesses if i ask you these abscesses basolt abscess settle is abscess lux abscess you remember what was basolt pus in the sternocleidomastoid see your notes again see your notes pus in the sternocleidomastoid is basolt abscess what is settle is abscess settle is abscess is pus in the posterior belly of digastric i just want to make this thing very clear you have to revise your notes what was luck abscess it is deep meatal abscess i am just making you revise the things that's it basolt abscess sternocleidomastoid settle posterior belly of digastric luck abscess deep meatal overall the most common is posterior auricular abscess i hope this thing is clear i hope this thing is clear fine chalo next question next question tubercular otitis media features are all except and the mnemonic is coming to your side first answer it tubercular otitis media features are all except i and i have written the mnemonic also p p p p answer this particular question answer this particular question and the mnemonic is also written multiple p's p p p p p it is pale pale granulations profuse discharge tubercular otitis media is painless and last p is perforations perforations that means there are multiple perforation this is the mnemonic p p p p p continuously p pale profuse painless pale granulations perforations see this is the image there are multiple perforations it is pale fine it is painless fine profuse discharge p p p is the continuous mnemonic that you have to remove and the treatment is yes anti tubercular treatment for all tuberculosis the treatment is yes anti tubercular treatment you might be knowing it better than me fine fine chalo next thing next thing we are hardly with very less number of questions left let us rise ourselves with lot of energy bachcho let us rise ourselves it generally takes efforts to revise almost the complete ent with these 25 questions for you people bachche and i am seeing that some are answering perfectly fine and some who are lacking little bit you just have to revise these 25 questions i have a genuine gut feeling that most part of ent will come within these 25 questions because i have created it in such a way that most ent part is what inculcated within these 25 questions fine brown sign is seen in chalo now let me see brown sign brown sign brown sign is seen in very 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 rightly said by number of candidates we have discussed acoustic neuroma not in that we have discussed minier disease we have discussed autosclerosis but we haven't discussed glomus tumor but still brown sign is seen in glomus tumor fine 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 if someone is putting audiometry i after all those 25 questions are done i will discuss audiometry don't worry at all and i have given you my instagram link also bachche put your maximum efforts whatever can be done from my side i will do if you have any doubts just put it there i'll i'll record videos and send you that's the best that i can do so don't worry fine brown sign is seen in yes glomus tumor chalo glomus tumor fatafat revise karte hain saath mein milke let us revise it together glomus tumor 
Glomus tumor is a sort of paraganglioma, basically of two types. Glomus jugular means a glomus tumor arising from the jugular bulb and glomus tympanicum. That means a glomus tumor that is arising from promontory. It is of basically two types. Fine. Glomus jugular, that means jugular bulb and tympanicum arising from promontory. Fine. Clear. Chalo. Basically, this is the typical image of glomus tumor. A reddish pulsatile mass. Blood filled reddish pulsatile mass. Blood filled reddish pulsatile mass behind intact tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane is normal. A reddish mass pulsatile mass behind intact tympanic membrane it is your glomus tumor it is your glomus tumor and for glomus tumor bache these are the only four things that you have to remember life is genuinely easy just these four signs one is rising sun sign brown sign equino sign and lastly phelps sign these are the four signs fine Fine. Rising sun sign. Tumor, if tumor is coming from below, if tumor is coming from below, it is called as rising sun sign. See, jugular bulb is in the floor of the middle ear. So, if a tumor is coming from the floor of the middle ear, it is rising sun sign. Fine. Chalo. Brown sign. Brown sign is nothing. It is just blanching, whitish appearance, blanching seen on pressing the tympanic membrane. Fine. Very easy, simply because by doing segalization. What is equino sign? It is again the blanching seen by pressing the neck vessel. Supposedly, there is a vessel. Fine. If I obstruct the vessel, blood won't reach basically my what? What? Glomus tumor. Again, blanching will appear. That is equino sign. And lastly, what is Phelps sign? Phelps sign is basically if the carotid and jugular partition is lost. These are the four signs. Fine. I genuinely, genuinely request that all the candidates listening to me don't worry. Just send messages, just send requests if you want. No worries. I'm available at in, in this particular Instagram most of the times to answer queries of each and every candidate. And every day I'm doing it. Not from today, for the past six months also. So don't worry, just relax. Fine, ENT underscore by underscore Dr. Shubham, DR dot Shubham. Fine, don't worry. Chalo, we are in just our last parts. I hope within 10-15 minutes our session will be done. Fine, and then I'll be taking up queries. So don't worry, just relax. High tracheostomy is indicated in. Chalo, answer this particular question. High tracheostomy is indicated in. High tracheostomy is indicated in. Answer. High tracheostomy is indicated in. High tracheostomy is indicated in. High tracheostomy is indicated in. Ah, I know the fact. Tracheostomy for the person who is studying what ENT tracheostomy will definitely be the strong part. Yes, high tracheostomy is done in cancer larynx. In laryngeal car uh, carcinoma, if I am planning for total laryngectomy, I go for high tracheostomy. Yes, let us discuss the important questions that are asked on tracheostomy. Just these, my gut feelings is these are the most important questions that can come for tracheostomy. First thing, the standard mid-tracheostomy is done between second and third tracheal ring. Remember, standard mid-tracheostomy is done between the second and the third tracheal ring. High tracheostomy, like done in the cases of laryngeal carcinoma, carcinoma larynx, is done between first and second tracheal ring. Fine. First point, second point. Low tracheostomy, if I am doing it below the third tracheal ring. If And when do I do lay tracheostomy? This is very important. When there is risk of what? Risk of foreign body aspiration. When there is risk of foreign body aspiration. Whenever there is risk of foreign body aspiration, I go for low tracheostomy. And the, this was my third point. And the last two points that you have to remember for tracheostomy, it is the PVC Portex cuffed tracheostomy tube. If you want to know tracheostomy in detail, you should check your notes. But better, these are the five points that what uh, you have to remember. That PVC 
Portex curved tracheostomy tube. It is the typical tracheostomy tube that we use in case of ICU patient. That we use in case of ICU patient and this has been your FMG question. That's why I'm putting it in such a manner. And lastly, lastly, this was my fourth point and the fifth point is supposedly there is a case of surgical emphysema. What is surgical emphysema? What happens is that the air escapes in the subcutaneous spaces. Fine. So air escapes in the subcutaneous spaces and the air will press all my structures including mediastinum and heart. That air is dangerous and that condition is called a surgical emphysema. How will I manage this condition of surgical emphysema? Just relax. Loosen the sutures. Fine. Loosen the sutures and take out the tube so that not much air goes inside. Fine. That is basically surgical emphysema management. And believe me, 99% of the time, just by loosening the sutures, surgical emphysema is corrected. Fine. Tight sutures are the main reason for surgical emphysema. Remember that. Tight suturing is the main reason for surgical emphysema. Fine. Let us go ahead to the next question. This is the condition that can happen to me or to any of the faculty. But anyways... A teacher with a history of voice abuse and episodes of acid reflux presents with change in voice. Most probable diagnosis of the cases. Chalo. A teacher with a history of voice abuse and episodes of acid reflux presents with change in voice. Most probable diagnosis of the cases. Chalo. Most probable diagnosis of the cases. It is very commonly called as teacher's nodule, singer's nodule, it is bilateral and yes it is vocal nodule. Vocal nodule is bilateral. Fine. Acid reflux is a very important risk factor. Fine. Let us discuss vocal nodule. Vocal nodule is also called a singer's nodule, screamer's nodule, teacher's nodule. Typical risk factor are voice abuse and Laryngopharyngeal reflux, basically your acid reflux. It is always bilateral. Remember that. It is almost always bilateral. Vocal nodule is bilateral. Please, please, please remember. Nodule is bilateral and vocal polyp is unilateral. And the important risk factor for polyp is smoking. Fine. Smoking. Smoking is not the risk factor for nodule. It is the main risk factor for vocal polyp. Fine. And genuinely, very less likely they will ask, but still I want to tell you, for nodule, the treatment is medical. And for polyp, the treatment is surgical. You remember that surgery, MLS microlaryngeal surgery, remember that. For nodule, the treatment is medical. Nodule, medical. Polyp, it is surgical fine and rinkes edema if you know well and good fine yes rinkes edema well and good right what is rinkes edema it is basically fluid collection see fluid has been collected fluid collection in sub epithelial space fluid collection in the sub epithelial spaces is basically your rinkes edema Again, very important risk factor, smoking. Voice abuse, yes it is, but smoking is a very important risk factor. Again, what we do is just, we have to do stripping of these vocal cords, edema and the fluid comes out and uh, everything is perfectly fine. You can say submucosal, subepithelial, almost the same thing, so don't worry. Fine? Chalo. Next, next, next. Before going to this particular question, I want to tell you, I generally if you ask me from my class 1st to 12th, I don't uh, remember anything in, that we studied in our English te textbooks. But one poem I cannot forget. In fact, I don't remember the poem also. But one thing written by Robert Frost, I remember. I just want to share it you, with you. I know most of you remember it also that uh, two roads diverge from a single wood and I chose the one less travelled by. This is the only thing that I remember, but it is genuinely truth. Two roads diverge from the single wood and I chose the one less travelled by. But I want to tell you one thing. 
एंड आई से द सेम थिंग इन माई लाइव क्लासेस ऑल्सो यही मौका है ग्रैब इट नाउ इट सेल्फ जेनविनली ग्रैब इट नाउ इट सेल्फ यू हैव इफ इफ आई सी योर रिस्पॉन्सेज वाइल डूइंग दिस पर्टिकुलर लाइव यूट्यूब चैनल सेशन आई फील दैट यू पीपल आर वेरी क्लोज जेनविनली वेरी क्लोज टू द सक्सेस पार्ट genuinely very close to the success part you have that knowledge you have that brain you have done your part first of all remember these 20 25 days left you have to just grab it like anything 20th january is your day 20th january is your day main aap se sach bol raha hu bacche एक आई हैव सीन सम ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स के चलो इस बार नहीं हुआ एंड बच्चे अगेन आई एम सिंग आई एम नॉट अ सॉर्ट ऑफ अ मोटिवेटर के सन विल राइज फ्रॉम द ईस्ट वन डे एंड यू विल गेट सिलेक्टेड नहीं ऐसा नहीं होता बिलीव मी इट नेवर हैपन्स लाइक दिस दिस इज योर चांस अदरवाइज ना यूल रिग्रेट के मुझे सिक्स मंथ्स बाद और वन ईयर लेटर आई हैव टू अटेम्प्ट अगेन आई हैव सीन नहीं हुआ तो अगली बार दे देंगे if my selection does not occur if my exam is not cleared this time no problem i'll give it the next time that next time won't ever come this is your time i am not moting waiting you for the next time or one year later this is your chance this is your time make most of it 20 25 days are enough for just two quick revisions revisions is the key to success till 19th believe me revisions will make the difference fine just 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 push the accelerator now just just push the accelerator now yaar now to forget but yesterday people were wishing merry christmas are what is merry about this christmas i i genuinely don't like wishing these things merry christmas i with that particular showing sort of a smile okay merry christmas are what is merry about this christmas and what is happy about this new year are the only thing happy is if my exam is cleared that's it otherwise no happy what resolution don't do anything just eat sleep and repeat once your exam is cleared that is the only thing fine rhinolelia clausa is seen in all except rhinolelia clausa is seen in all except options are palatal insufficiency adenoid bilateral infinitervenate and bilateral nasal obstruction i don't know only one or two have answered but the answer is actually palatal insufficiency think about it think about it think about it what is rhinolelia clausa and rhinolelia aperta c rhinolelia clausa clausa means hyponasality clausa means hyponasality that means decreased nasal components it is seen in any conditions leading to nasal obstruction अगर आपको आता भी नहीं है सपोजिटली इफ यू डू नॉट नो द आंसर थिंक अबाउट दिस दीज थ्री कंडीशन आर कॉजिंग नेजल ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन दिस इज द ऑड वन आउट ऑप्शन ए इज द ऑड वन आउट यू कैन डायरेक्टली मार्क ऑड वन आउट पैलेटल इनसफिशियंसी बट स्टिल राइनो ले लिया क्लॉजा क्लॉजा मीन्स कम क्लॉजा मीन्स लेस हाइपो नेजलिटी डिक्रीज नेजल कॉम्पोनेट सीन इन ऑल कंडीशन ऑफ नेजल ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन दीज थ्री आर द वॉट conditions of nasal obstruction lower three ones and see rhinolelia aperta see your dictionary aperta means increase hypernasality aperta means increase hypernasality increase nasal component seen in conditions of palatal insufficiency like palatal insufficiency cleft palate fine and that was the option except because palate in palatal insufficiency i see rhinolelia aperta please with that particular thing i end this particular session with one very beautiful line i just wrote two days back when i was sleeping at night i just remembered i want to share one story before oh, i finish this particular session i want to tell you one thing but i what when i was preparing for my post graduate examination and i asked my genuinely asked my sir or senior sir what if um uh, i am not getting selected this time if my exam is not cleared he said that agar tera nahi hoga to fir to kisi ka hoga kisi ka to hoga na bachche agar aapka nahi hoga to kisi ka to selection hoga na someone to will get selected no obviously so better be that someone 
better be that someone if you are not selected someone will 100% will get selected better be the someone i just want to say this particular thing to you all if you won't clear your exam genuinely i will say someone else will 100% someone else will i wish you all choose someone side i genuinely wish you all choose someone side fine fine just clear exa- clear your exams after the exams results are out you will have ample of time genuinely i say after a exam results are out just ah theek hai now my new year starts now i will do whatever i want but put your accelerator now this is the time this is my chance no six months later no i'll pr- clear it next time no this is your chance 20 25 days are left and let us be that someone someone to will na obviously someone will clear na be that someone fine with that particular note i just wish hope and say with my folded arms all the very best and jai hind fine if you have any doubts you can fine if you have any doubts we can we can discuss we can discuss fine if you have still have any doubts i have no problem spending 5 10 minutes with this particular thing and still bachche if you have any doubts i am genuinely i don't know about anyone but i am 110% there to attend to attend to attend you on my instagram page there that, that is the particular source where i am much more commonly associated with fine being a hardcore surgeon i am a हार्ड को सर्जन है टपोलो तो मुझे उतना ही टाइम मिलता है कि मैं आप इंस्टा पे तो आपको अटेंड जरूर करूंगा फाइन तो एनीवेज स्टिल हाँ समवन वाज आस्किंग ऑडियोमेट्री आई विल फ्रॉम दिस थैंक्स आई विल एक्सप्लेन दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग बच्चे ऑडियोमेट्री में ना एक बड़ी सिंपल सी चीज बता रहा हूँ कोई कन्फ्यूज होने की बात ही नहीं है सी इफ दिस इज द ओनली थिंग दैट आई बी डिस्कसिंग इफ यू अलाउ मी sub so, see this will be a graph that will be shown fine this will be the graph that will be shown fine here there will be 25 decibel that is the audiometric zero here there will be audiometric zero 25 decibel just remember this thing fine just remember this thing that if you see first thing is that if you see red lines red lines is for red lines is for what red lines is basically for right ear fine and blue blue is for left ear fine this is the first thumb thumb rule that you have to remember second thumb rule is but you always remember that bone conduction line is always above air conduction line is always below you don't have to look at the symbols just see bone conduction line is always above air conduction line is always below always below so how will the graph uh, i mean how the graph will be seen is fine how the graph will be seen is see see this will be the graph 25 fine so if both the lines please remember both the lines i'll take a, i'll talk about right here red fine if both the lines are above 25 that means it is normal i told you the above one line is always bc above line is always bc bachche life mein bhi bc rule kar rahe hain isme to samjhane ki baat nahi hai is pure world mein in this particular world also bc's are ruling i don't want to complete this bc's fine bc stands for bone conduction fine you may be thinking something else anyways ac line is always below fine bc and ac bc line is always above if both the lines are above 25 it is normal if supposedly one line goes below that is the ac line goes below 25 fine it is conductive hearing loss it is simply conductive hearing loss conductive hearing loss if bc line is above normal above 25 it is normal and the air conduction l- line is uh, gone below it is conductive hearing loss fine now remember and the gap is high see the gap is i the gap is greater than 25 decibel the gap is greater than 25 decibel fine now 
if you see in such a way that both the lines have come down both bc and ac have come down and the gap is low gap is very narrow gap is low gap is very narrow that means 110% the graph is of snhl the graph is of snhl fine and if you see if you see for telling a graph as mixed hearing loss i should have both the features now that means gap should be high see gap should be high and both the lines should also come downwards like snhl so if the gap is high and both the lines have come downwards it is mixed hearing loss very easy fine if both the lines are above 25 it is normal if one line bc is above the other line has gone beyond and the gap is high it is basically conductive hearing loss fine if both the lines have gone downwards and are lying close to each other there is no gap almost no gap less the gap less than 25 gap it is sensory neural hearing loss and to label mixed hearing loss i need to have both the features the gap is also high and both have come downwards it is mixed hearing loss and the key salient features at last that you have to remember but you remember low frequency rising curve if curve is seen like this it is seen in meniere's disease if you see low frequency then won't show in fact they'll directly up if you see low frequency rising curve it is seen in meniere's disease if this show a down sloping curve down sloping curve it is seen in presbycusis fine it is seen in presbycusis third condition if you see a characteristic dip at 2000 hertz it is the carhart's notch of autosclerosis fine and if you see a characteristic dip at 4000 hertz it is acoustic dip seen in noise induced hearing loss that is it apart from that nothing will be asked from your audiometry pure tone audiometry part but still if you still have any doubt and if you want that you want me to explain pure tone audiometry in detail because in my live classes i spend a whole lot half an hour 45 minutes for pure tone audiometry i'll definitely do so so nothing to worry just ping me on instagram but still i just at last again with the folding hands i just want to say you all the very best my best wishes again jai hind thank you